p.m. this afternoon, the government of Trinidad and Tobago was overthrown. The Prime Minister and members of the Cabinet are under arrest. We are asking everybody to remain calm. The revolutionary forces are commanded to control the streets. The Imam Abu Bakr wants you to know that the police headquarters in downtown Port Spain has been gutted by fire. They are still in control of TTT. Then why has God given us the power over them? Why are we sitting here tonight before you? Who makes the decision in the universe? Isn't it not your creator? Where is the Prime Minister tonight to address the nation? Where is he? God has removed him. God has removed the authority, not the power, because no man, including myself, has any power. We have only temporary authority because we all die. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to it. It's your boy, Just Jace, and welcome to the Mic Drop Sessions right here on my YouTube page, Just Jace 868. Don't forget, support, subscribe, like, comment, share. Click that bell for notifications so you have upcoming episodes. You'll be notified as soon as they are available. This is a very, very special show I'm doing today. Normally, we're out on a Wednesday, but today being Tuesday, July 27th, 2021, it's exactly 31 years, the anniversary, 31st anniversary of the 1990 attempted coup in Trinidad and Tobago. Now, this particular individual I have with me, not only is he responsible in terms of opening a door for a lot of good voices to get their chance on radio, this dude had a lot of firsts that I didn't even know about until we talked off air, all right? He is a veteran in the game, one of the stalwarts of radio. You can hear his voice on countless radio and TV commercials. In fact, we've done voice commercials together. Listen, we've done it all. Starting off at TBC and being one of the hostages held during the 1990 coup from the radio side. We're going to talk more about that. But right now, I have to welcome my friend, my brethren. I ain't talked to him in a while, but here he is, the one and only Harold Thompson in the building. What's up, sir? What's up? Where are you, sonny boy? <laughs> Harold here? Where are him? <laughs> What's up, my brother? What's up? What's up? I am good. I am good. I'm good. Good to see you. I could see and hear that. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. You know, I'm listening to you. I could... <laughs> you know. Before we jump off. Talk to me. Some time ago, when you we were working on you were on one hundred four and nine seven. Yes, yes, yes. And I, I, I don't think you picked up on it then. Mm -hmm. you were next level. You were next level. Oh, and yeah. You didn't. You didn't pick up on it then. Right, right, right. Through all the years yeah. to know. You know, I have to repeat it, and I have to explain on it. <laughs> I see you saying, giving your props to all the people who um, laid the groundwork for you and stuff like that. But to every level you came in, came, wherever you came in, you always took what you had to the next level. Now you have people, you have people who, you know what set the foundation first, you can't reinvent the wheel. Right. Next level people. You know, you have a basketball team, you have good players. But yeah, Jordan, <laughs> that's you. You call me yeah. Jordan, boy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. You're in the lineup, you're in the lineup with Jordan. And, and, and as I say that too, let me just drop in another Jordan to the game. I know he was on earlier on, Chris Boynes. Chris Boynes, salute. Yeah. All right, salute, you can move salute, from here. salute. Yeah. All right. CB. Yeah, man. So we have a bunch of good things to talk about in this particular episode today. Um, mm -hmm. before even get into the July 27th, the anniversary of the coup and all that. My time, my time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I want to talk mm. about Harold Thompson in 2021. What's happening with you? What's your status? Where are you? And what you're up to? Okay, well, I'm uh, at Music Radio 97. Been there now 28, I believe, going on 29 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We don't even want to go into how much years in the business. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just like when you're telling your age, you know, you have a time when you just stop. You just you stop. Yeah. Guy, yeah. I've done how it old are you? Yeah. How old are you again? And you just skip. <laughs> And you say, boy, um, and you continue. Yeah, it's been that long. When, wow. you, when you when you start off in radio, and people like Barbara Soon, Bob Gittens, Percy Andran, and them fellas still on air, you know, you know, Winston Maynard still yeah. on air doing yeah. live programs. Yes, you know, yeah, you're yeah, wrong, long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but right now, rocking according according to, to support Richards. I'm at the um the infirmary, the rocking infirmary. <laughs> rocking infirmary. Yeah, yeah. You just yeah, rocking infirmary. <laughs> yeah, but we're rocking. We're rocking. Hey, we're still you're rocking. still at least you're still on the airwaves. All right, you're in yes. the adult contemporary market. You're handling mm -hmm. the the nostalgia, the the oldies. You know what I mean? Huh? Uh, the classics. And I'm you've taking been, care of my people. You're taking care <laughs> of people. You know what I'm saying. So yeah. salute to you on that music radio nine seven. Salute. I miss the team. Salute to everybody yeah. there, man. Yeah? Come on. <laughs> we had some fun. We had fun. <laughs> All right. So we're going to take it back to the days here. We're trying to avoid. We had to go back. We had to go back. Yeah, Harold yeah, yeah. Thompson, I need to go from... Um, even before you got on radio, you want to know about your humble beginnings, um, what it is called you or, or summoned you to be a part of this whole radio industry, um, when you realize you had the voice for it, if you realize it at all. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, who are some of, in, some of your influences? I know you didn't DJ, but give us the whole the whole spectrum from day one. Okay, from 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 Tiny Tut, maybe about five six. I was always fascinated with radio. Um, I remember having my mother's um, transistor radio, and just going over and listening to all the voices, different programs, and stuff like that. And as the years went by, what I started to do was imitate the people that I was hearing on air. And um, the guys in the area, that's Oxford Street, they used to call me um, special effects, sound effects. Yeah. Sound, sound effects. effects. Yeah, they used to say sound <laughs> effects. So like whenever they're having anything, they say sound effect, come. And I would give them the, the you know, the, 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 the sound or whatever it is, or, or the lead up the intro to whatever it is they were going to do. Right. There was this guy named Judy, had a big sound system. A man, and, uh, Judy, Judy, yeah, Judy okay. was his name. A guy, okay. yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, homeboy, homeboy, you know, you have one of those names that people will make fun of. You don't make fun of Judy, name, eh? you call him Judy, and you know, yeah, yeah. So, he was one of them. <laughs> yeah. One soul, a man, don't even see. Let me see him in my shadow. Right, right. Stand right. Up in my shadow. So he was that kind of person. Right, right. So Judy right. had serious sound system. And he would um, always call me to be the mic man. Nice. He was in the party. We had the, the block holes and stuff in the area. Now, DJ Newbert lived. Heavy roller. Here. Newbert, the heavy roller. <laughs> was of, you know, he lived a little way from me on Oxford Street. You know, so I would see him coming down in the afternoon and the fellas with all the, the tube bounce and stuff like that. And they were going to Chong Chang Association for the big parties where yeah. you had DJ Nose yeah. and Rocky and them fellas and them. Yeah. So I would go and just, you know, watch him hook up, right? And 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 was just fascinated by the whole DJ thing and, and, and the voicemen and stuff like that. And all through school, that was my thing. Just imitating the people that I was hearing on radio. That was that was it for me. I nothing else interested me. After finishing school, I was on morning shift at Diego Martin Junior Sec. Right. I and just turn on the radio and listen to everything. But I mean, from, you know, from, let's say, two in the afternoon, all the way till six, seven, until I may go in my bed and I'm listening to radio. Who were the hot people on the radio back in those days? Um, okay, Barbara Soon and Bob Gittins, a mid-morning show on, on 7.30. At that time... AM radio was yeah, the, yeah, yeah. It was six right? ten AM um, and seven thirty AM. Yeah, yeah. Jim Sutherland was doing projection three at that time. I had no Rennie Bishop. Serious? 
Kim Sutherland was the projection three man. Okay. Billy Reese, Billy Reese used to run the weekend. Billy Reese Saturday on the weekend. He had a, a Friday evening show too. Phil Simmons and um and Dave Elcock with the men jamming on 610 side. Then there was um Barbara Salandi. Um, there was this radio announcer. He was the first radio announcer that I met, and he took me into 610, you know, as you know, 11, 12, Percy Andran. Serious. Real old time style, yeah. Um, Winston Maynard, too, was right. one here. Yeah. Russell Winston. Russell Those Winston. People, I mean, I mean, yeah. 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 Um, Don Paul Foot and all had a program, you know, feature program on the air. Those were the people that I was listening to yeah. back then. And then it started, Jim Sutherland went on holidays, and I remember when Renny Bishop took over. I didn't like him at all. I was like, God, why Jim You didn't like Renny? At all in the beginning. Yeah. You know, when you're listening to someone for, for a long time, you know, somebody new jump in. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Where this man come from, boy, go back, you know. Yeah. But then, then, of course, Bishop again, a next level person. Right. You know, hit everything out of the ballpark. Um, Tony Harford. When yeah. FM started, Tony Harford was the king of FM. Right. 9-5 <clears throat> didn't have an answer to that. We played classical music and stuff. Yeah. It, well, I say we, but when I joined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 9 5 was playing classical music and stuff. I didn't, didn't have much. I didn't have any live program, really. Yeah. Um, no, sorry. Emmett Hennessy with the countdown. Okay. On a okay. Saturday from 12 to 6 in the afternoon. That was the only live show on 9-5 at the time. Wow. When 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 I um when I got there, and that's what I was listening to. Story into getting into radio now. Yes. My mom worked at Caribbean Conference for Churches. Um, and there was a Dr. Neville Linton. He used to do um features on radio trinidad okay and while she was working there unknown to me she was telling them about her son who is this radio freak always in, the, the, you know the, 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 um, the sound effect man <laughs> yeah the sound effect man <laughs> imitating everybody and stuff like that on, right. on, on radio right and uh, i never forget this final exam a wednesday math i feel yeah after after yeah when they were i was good at math in the beginning and then when they went x over y z <laughs> f of x i say hey you're i say i'm f of x i vex you know so finish the exam the wednesday morning mm -hmm. and go on um to meet my mom at caribbean conference at churches that time they had the um the office was on Charlotte Street. Right. And um, she said, um, come let me introduce you to this person. I've been telling him about you and stuff like that. So I went in and she said, Dr. Neville Linton, this is Harold. Thing, blah. So we started talking and he asked me about radio and I was telling him, yes, I listen and I really want to be a, 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 a radio personality and stuff like that. You know, person on radio and so on. Yeah. So he said, okay, cool. And that was the end of the conversation. Thursday, my mom comes to me and she said, listen, Neville said, meet him at Radio Trinidad for 10 o'clock in the morning. This will be the Friday now, right? Left, hey, last exam is the Wednesday. This is Friday. Of course, I got to the station before him. Yes. Because I'm living on Oxford Street. I actually walk past yes. the time Kitchener had his tent right between um, the Memorial Park Raymond Reed basketball court and had a building that Kitchener had that a Lord Kitchener tent was there, walked through all of that. Right. Down, right. Yeah, right. Down by the embassy. Yes. Outside by Radio Trinidad. Evelyn Dunn shows up. He said, Come. We go into TBC, go into the office. Gabriel Francis sitting behind the desk and Archie Henry started standing up. You're calling some store what names there, boy. Yeah. yeah. Um <clears throat> this True talk, no lie. Evelyn Tom walked into the office with me. He said, um, this is Mr. Gabriel Francis, the program director, Archie Henry. Guys, this is the young man I've been telling you all about. And turn and walk out. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
เกินอาหัวคนละคนสุริยาอาทิตย์ผมไม่ได้สุดดองแต่ว่าเดมิสเตอร์ฟรานซิสตันที่ว่าจะให้คุณ yes ดีดีดีดีดีเมสเตอร์ฟรานซิสตันอย่างอืม we heard about you มิสเตอร์ลาฟ he had a lot to say about you very good things very good things so um you want to be in radio so I said yes and you know what give them a little thing of myself and so on We don't have an opening for a radio announcer right now because the guy who we had, he, a, a technical operator, he just moved over. That was Glenn Antoine. Wow. Glenn Antoine. But he didn't like to be called Glenn Antoine. So it's Glenn Antoine. Antoine, yes, yes. Yeah, Antoine had just moved from being a technical operator to announcing. Announcer, right, yeah. right. So he right. said, we have an opening as a technical operator. You what, you're interested in that? Now, by then, I knew what a technical operator was from hearing it, because in those days you had the presenter and the operator. So I would hear Jim Sutherland saying Randy Hayward on the control, right, 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 on right, right, and so on. So I knew it, they were the person behind the scene doing the work and stuff like that. Right. So I said, yeah, sure. So they said, come, and they took me to a room where I met Mr. David Edwards. He was the chief technical operator. Okay. Again, true talk, no lie. <laughs> Mr. Francis said, "Mr. Edwards, this is Harold Thompson, and he would like to join the team as a technical operator." And he walk and gone. Is Mr. Edwards no true talk, no lie? True talk, no lie. It's like God was moving with me. Wow, that's the only, that's the only way I could describe it. Yes. Um. So Mr. Edwards had a chat with me. And he said, um, "You know what a technical operator is." And so, <laughs> so of course, you're like, "You boy had to confess." Uh, well, no, not really. But so, he said, "Okay, um, let me take you around and show you what it is, what, yeah. what it is, and that kind of thing." So he took me around to different studios. Got a little peeping on the live studio, the 7:30 a.m. studio and stuff. We had no, remember, we had no 105 at that time. None, yeah. Evan was in the central control room, just tapes. There's a studio upstairs, but like I said, that was only used. So um, I said, "Yeah, I'm interested. I, I I want to do this." So he said, "Okay, when you, when you could start?" I said, "Well, right now." Somebody roof just <laughs> won there, boy. <laughs> Somebody roof. The roof, the roof is in the air. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, it's all right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I said I could start right now. By that time, it's about let's say about twelve o'clock, midday, because I got there for ten. Right. No sight of Le- Neverlinton again, huh? No, no, no. He woke up. Not even in the building, but did his probably recording and gone. So I'm, I am my own here now. So I said, "What's saying? When you could start?" I said, "Well, right now, I you know just out of school, waiting on results and so on." So. I'm ready. Yeah. He say, um, okay, I'll assign you to one of the technical operators, and you will do your training with that person. And at the end of the training period, you know, if you if you're up to standard, you're on. Right. Osman Victor was the first person they aligned me with. Now Osman <clears throat> was real good technical operator, but <laughs> one of those characters. Yeah. Right. Um. Yeah, he would do some crazy things, and one of the <laughs> on the first night that we worked, he went through everything with me. The turntable, this is the pot, so and so thing. He showed me the whole works and stuff like that. We worked the night shift, which was from six to twelve midnight. At ten o'clock, of course, he said, "Sit down behind the the, the set and stuff like that." What oh, yeah? Up the tapes, reeling up the tapes and stuff like that. Playing the few minutes. Ew. It was more. Um, recorded programs at that time of the evening, like after the six o'clock news, you had Farzan Ali, Moe Mohammed, Pat Matura, and, and those Indian programs. Right. All the way up to 10. Mm-hmm. At 10 o'clock on some nights, we would have either a pre recorded show or it would just be music going on. And Rocky McCollins, a, a top historian. Yes, yes. Um, yes. He had. Uh, a history program where you, you play um, classic um, calypsos, and he would give you the history. Well, 
he would have the information and whoever is the announcer on duty would be reading it or most of the time it would be Winston Maynard <clears throat> right, 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 doing right. that part of the program and stuff like that. So gave me the opportunity to sit down behind the board and work that thing. You know, first night, <laughs> the Tuesday, they, they, the following day was a Saturday. He was working midday. The way how the shift went was night, midday, morning, and you're off the next day. Okay. Right? So the midday shift on a Saturday, back then, they had a lot of BBC programs. Sports, right, right. Sports World and horse racing and stuff like that. Yeah. Sat me down again. I'm behind the mic, so then the Sunday morning thing. By the Tuesday, when we came out for the night shift, the six o'clock news, as one says, sit down. And he's sitting down behind me in the studio. Boy well, went through, thing up my tears, rack up all my commercials for the next day, run through the thing. The midday, the Wednesday, same thing, but on the on, on the midday now, he used to come in at Two o'clock. So you had the Rene Bishop experience. He used to operate and do everything on his own. So we would come out to the studio and, um, and just laze outside until right. There's breeze until he's done. Come, yeah, until until it was time to come back in and stuff like that. Yeah. And during that time, I would come in and peep at him and stuff like that. No, I don't know if Stanley. I can't remember. No, Stanley didn't know Bishop, but um, Chris. Would tell you about this. Rennie did not like anybody in that studio when with he's him. on. Yeah, he used to have all the lights off and he used to zone out. Anybody come in, it used to like throw him off and he would just give you a kind of look, you know, them take eyebrows and things would just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't used to have to say anything. Men would just bolt. Right. And um, I don't know again into the studio and stand up and look at him and he wouldn't say anything and sometimes he would let me go and sit down in the back so i would don't be down in the back quiet sometimes they're looking for me outside to go and do a recording and, and they can't find you <laughs> yeah they can't find her all at all like, <laughs> in the studio just you know like watching bishop work you know what i mean and just like in awe of what was going on then i met chris chris was also moving out from the library into on um, um on, air, yes. on air operating and stuff like that yes, yes no let me tell you something people don't really understand <laughs> the kind of monster chris is that board serious you know i heard him telling you that he liked being behind the scene and producing and stuff like that yes, yes. no lie chris is a beast not just on the turntables and stuff like that but but production. It's, it's technical skills, yeah. technical ability. Production and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris yeah. and I were the two youngsters in there. I'm a 17-year-old, and Chris, I think, was 18. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Breeze like man. <laughs> I might have to strap myself down to the chair just. <laughs> yeah. It's a yeah. windy day in Diego. Yes. Yeah. Chris, of course, Chris and I link. The two youngsters in the building Chris showed me how to do, you know, like splicing tape and editing and, you know, doing fillers between songs and stuff like that, special effects. And in those days, we didn't have like, no, you bring up a sound effect on your computer oh, no. And, and no, this, you had it on a disc. Yes, yes. Yeah, your song effect was from on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, And you had to record it on your A track. Yes. Your thing. So, you know, you'll be playing a song and then you'll hear, dang, dang. And then you're going to something else. Yes. That's like kind of thing to make, to make your link. You see? Song effect. Sony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, Chris taught me how to do all of those things. He tried with it to the table. Right. But you couldn't do it. I just couldn't catch it here. Yeah. yeah. And, I heard you all talking about the belt drive turntables that you yes. came in and met. Yes. In my time and Chris, we had an older version of that. The, the, the turntable plate was big, so it was huge. Wow. The nice thing about it, as far as mixing, is that when you held the record, it actually used to keep spinning. So the record would stay and you would still have that movement 
and there was some gear levers. Yes. You would you would take it out of the speed where it is 33 or 45, and you only had 78 too. Yes, yes. You had a 78. So you would put it in a kind of neutral position and you would be hitting in there and then after you and then you do a quick drop mix. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know? That was that, you didn't have nothing say you went into into an X form and stuff like that. <laughs> it, it used to be drop mix. Right, drop right, mix. right, 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 right. Like okay. Um until Bishop came and started do his thing. Yes. And you know, he would do some of his mixes from home where the technique turntables, yes, you know, was yes. coming into being and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, yeah, um everything started to the, the flow from there. The, the flow from there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I eventually moved on from being a technical operator in the studio to being an outside broadcast operator an ob um operator they called it you should be the big the big yellow the yellow and white van right <laughs> going out of the yellow and white van and going to going to to the different venues right right up with the little amp and and in my day the announcer have the mic there and you yes 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 and the antenna up, 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 up on some boxes <laughs> yeah we have the antenna up on the box so yeah. and stuff like that and um yeah so i went to that and then central control being central control operator the person who basically making sure everything running Run in, that because in those days air running we in. had to make the link like for the news to play by that time nine five was taking the news and stuff you start to use jacks and see yeah. kind of like a long, long time like a long time telephone operator like them telex right. operators yeah so, exactly for yeah. the BBC news, for the BBC news features and all the things like that, you'd have the line I coming from. I forget that. That's true. Right, I remember that room. I remember that room. Coming from, right, coming from um, Telco. And, <laughs> and, and and you have the line. So yes. you call them. You call them before and you, you call the, the person at Telco and you say, okay, we're looking for the live feed from the BBC, so, 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 and they send you the line. Yes. And they used to That's ball through okay. the little talk back speaker. Right, yeah. So See, coming out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going yeah. yeah. on with feet, Jack, coming out. Yeah, where did you, where did you, where did you, Um, you put it in and then you, you, you run it to the, to the studio that it, yes. It, yes. it was coming from and so on. So I went through all of that. Wow. Take a pause. Hey, we, hey. Had, we had, we had a chance. That, yeah, that's yeah. some epic time. Epic, epic time. My angry cup. <laughs> <laughs> I like the cup. I'm always yeah. angry. Mm -hmm. oh. Right. Nice. Mm -hmm. Next level. Nice. So I doing my operating and stuff by and I started to show little signs of wanting to be on air and stuff like that. And you know, doing little voice clips and thing and and just like Goose told you, trying to sneak in a little something with your voice on it and yes, so on. Yes, yes. When a man reached late fish shift and Yeah, <laughs> try to try to play a little thing. The first first shine on that. One morning, Jim Sutherland was late. Didn't come out at all for the morning show. Mm. Show up for the morning show. I was a technical operator. And I used all of those things that Chris had taught me with the bridges. And I, 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 yeah, I, um, I was giving the time check. So we just be, it's 7.45. You know, you're listening to Radio Trinidad, 7.30 a.m. It's now 20 minutes after whatever. Yeah. And you something. And your commercials. Those days, more commercials than music. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. More commercials, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you may, in, in, in your three, four hour shifts, you might play about four songs. Yes, yes, it's true. It's Those true. Days. Yeah. And when I was finished, Archie Henry came in and he said, I'm impressed. I love what it is you did this morning. I realized that um, Jim didn't come out. And you held on the shift like a boss. Right. He went on to tell um general manager of the station. I'm trying to remember his name right now. But um he too, and he wrote it in letter. He sent me a letter saying that he left his home, McDowell. McDowell. Yeah, Mr. McDowell. He left his home in Diego Martin and came to Radio Trinidad, list, I mean, to work on yeah. Maraval Road, listening to the station, and did not realize that Jim Sutherland wasn't there. Wow. He did not, he, he put it in a letter. If 
you know, I was looking for that letter after we spoke about this. Yeah, 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 yeah. To, to show it up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, you know, wherever the old man hide it, I just can't remember. <laughs> you know, we old people, we just put it away <laughs> for safekeeping. And then, the, as you used to tell me, the Centrum Titanium. The Centrum Titanium didn't kick in. <laughs> Next level Titanium. <laughs> It's not working. <laughs> oh, yes, he wrote in a letter that he, you know, did not even realize that Jim wasn't there. Right. And she came and told him, listen, this is what happened and so on. So by then, the spotlight was on the young blood right. bubbling. Yes. Saturday morning, working in central control. The first, or it could have been a Sunday, the first Guinness Marathon place in trinidad can't remember the year if you go up in your history okay I'm gonna, you know i'm gonna look for it first, yeah the very first guinness marathon being held in trinidad uh -huh. um we were carrying it live on radio trinidad of course and dave lamy was supposed to be the announcer on duty five minutes to start time raise everybody we made the checks you know the people out there for the race the commentators i can't remember who it was and um even not in studio right i ran into the studio <laughs> right make sign on the, um did the introduction did the commercial and joined the team oh race off man talking and stuff about 50 minutes after swear to god again Dave Lamy walked in. Who oh, um, who oh, started the program? Who oh, who do the program? I say I did. Jeez. I believe Lamy is no longer with us, right? Wow. But Dave Lamy just turned and walked out the building. Dave Lamy went home. I finished the shift. I finished the shift. After that, they say, yeah, you? You want to be on here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go with Russell Winston. Russell Winston was one of the, the, the old school guys yeah, man, there. Yeah, yeah. And I can't remember who was in the, the, the session with me, but it was a couple of other people along with me and Russell Winston was now teaching us how to do broadcasting and stuff like that right. and that was the beginning of it later on um by that time i was you know my first program on nine five sorry to jump again Hi, sorry. this is one of the first when nine five like i said it was just tape and, um emmett hennessy run doing his thing Calm down, yeah yeah right the first live program out of that was me doing a program called brazilian tempo Zero Airlines, Jenny Francois. That was my guiding angel in there. Yes. Say, Harold, I want you to do this program. A half an hour. It used to be like Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Cruise Airlines were trying to make a link to make Brazil the go-to spot instead of Curacao. Every yeah, time, everybody used to be. If you can't make it to New York, Curacao, Curacao was, was the next spot. Yeah, 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 shopping yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. So Brazil was trying to catch in on that Cruise Zero Airlines. And I played Portuguese music and DJ and Portuguese music. Don't know what thing I was talking about, but fine, right? Unfortunately or sadly, people didn't take the bait to go to Brazil. Right. So after a couple of months, they scrapped. Jenny Francois again, along with Percy Parker. They got to Percy Parker. Percy Parker, yeah. Mustache for you. Yeah. Big shout to big mustache. <laughs> and the bumblebee sting me near. Uh, listen, folks. A a legendary commercial. If you can put your hands on it. Yeah. I think it's I think it's floating around on YouTube. Yeah. The bumblebee commercial the from bumblebee Percy Parker. Me, Dickens bumblebee. Petroleum the Jelly. Petroleum Jelly. Woo! Yeah, yeah. Percy, Percy Parker and Jenny Francois had the idea for a soccer program on 9-5. Again, yeah, soccer, real soccer. That time, the only people bubbling soccer was 
Phil Simmons yes. and Big Brother Dave Elcock. Yes, yes. So come in, the champions are so Yes, well. yes. It was Calypso. Yes. So yeah, was, Calypso, yeah, more Calypso. was young. Was, yeah, yeah, so Calypso, right? Yeah. When they gave me a one hour on a Monday, right? One hour on a Monday. It was a Monday, yeah. One hour on a Monday. I named the program Soka Jam Session. Soka Jam Session. And for that, here's the second first. I went to uh, youth man in Diego Martin, Gerald Thomas. He was a little bubbling DJ group out from LKC and M. Right. Uh, these, these girls, um, big brothers. Well, um, Ali, Ali said the Duchess's Ali, brothers. Yeah, the Duchess. Yes. yes. Not a general and the team like yourself. Yeah. yeah, of course, she was baby. I, yeah, she was yeah, a baby. And, and um, <clears throat> brothers had LKC. Yes. And, and 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 this group was like a kind of break off from them. They were all partners and stuff. But Gerald Thomas was the mix man. Big G so was a mix man. No, not not Gerald Thomas. Sorry, Gerald. Oh. Yeah, Gerald Newton. Sorry, Gerald Newton. Newton. Okay, right. Yeah, Gerald yeah, Newton. Newton. right. Yeah, G man. G man as your brother. G man came later. Don't get it. Um. So, um, Gerald Newton would do. The mixes and stuff for me and stuff like that and i have him in the studio and he would do the mix so that was the first nobody else had djs coming in was i don't even know if management realized of what was going on at it because yeah. nobody really wasn't looking at how the thing was produced it was just right. was coming out once it acceptable and so, so 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 recap the first one was the the, 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 the first one was Brazilian, yeah. Brazilian. You first place to play Brazilian, Brazilian music. tempo, Brazilian, Brazilian music. tempo, right? Right, yeah. And your second yeah. first is the jam session. Soca jam it session soca with a DJ. On. Right, with a DJ on 9.5. Right. Okay. That's two firsts, okay? Yeah, we're going. Yeah. So we run through that, and the soca jam session was big. Went on for a couple of years. And listen, let me show you how big soca jam session got. People like David Rudder. Ronnie McIntosh, who was on top of the game in that time. The Fosto, Gypsy, Dollar Wine, um, Colin yeah. Lucas. Colin Lucas. There was the kind of people coming through. Carl and Carol Jacobs coming through to, to get a little team on the program, chat about the music, what they're doing, what they're moving around and things, band members, right, and stuff right, like that. Right, right. Yeah, people coming through and stuff like that. Program was so big. Another presenter. After, you know, when you, when you build something, everybody just start looking at you. Yes, yes, yes. So, this big time announcer came with his sponsor, which was Pepsi Cola at the time. And, of course, they power me out. I, it was a power move. Okay, okay. And I, I ended up losing the program and it became the Pepsi um so Pepsi jam Cola session? jam session or some kind of thing like okay, that. Okay, so, okay, okay. And after they run it for a couple of months, they kill it. Oh, because they had no DJ who was playing right, the, the tunes. Like so it just became a normal you play a song, you come yeah, in and say yeah, something yeah, and yeah, yeah. nothing. Yeah. Right. So let me get a little piece of thing before we move to the next level. Yeah. Um, Chris Boynes and Stan the man. Okay. By that time, those guys, Steve Sutherland, and they had joined the the, 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 the network and stuff like that. Now, of course, you know Stanley's voice, um, Adrian yes. and Steve Sutherland. Yes, yes. Those guys, you know, Crispy. like yeah, you know, they just had it even like from day one. I even remember too when um randy yearwood which is adrian's uncle Pick up to Randy's. Yeah, randy. oh, boy, yeah. Listen, uh, that is my technical operator daddy you know yes randy when i jumping out of myself and stuff like that <laughs> you're young and you're bubbling for something that <laughs> randy used to say come 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 come, come. <laughs> um, sit down sit down let me talk to you <laughs> and set me all straight right. and set me back in your corner you, go, <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah so Pick much love to Rand much love to Randy I would for that Randy, yeah um <clears throat> yeah those guys had now come on the scene and stuff Stanley and Chris would have told you they linked them up for the Saturday program yes 
as Stanley was mentioning to you, he was late one Saturday. He got stuck down the island with his... Yes, oh, yes. Right. That Saturday, I was the technical control, I mean, central control operator. He came down. He said, Harold, I can't find Stanley. Look, we're almost ready to start. Ding, ding, ding. I said, all right, hold on. Paul Gabriel Francis, no answer. Paul Archie Henry, no answer. Paul Marcel Mahabia, no sales manager, no answer. I say, hey, what's going on, Chris? You're on or no? You see, I'm mad. I say, hey, what's going on, Chris? You know how the commanders go here. The central control operator is the man in charge when you can't get these people things. The program has to go on. You have to do it. He said, but I don't want to go behind the mic. I said, Chris, you have to do the program. It has sponsors and all that kind of thing. He said, wait just to go say it, okay? I said, hey, I will take the box. I, I make the call. The program needs to run. And I knew you could do this. Because I knew Chris could do it. Yes, you understand? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, homeboy went up. Start off maybe a little shaky. I can't even remember. Yeah. But as he said, and Stanley mentioned after Monday, when Marcel come out, he call him up. And he say, yeah, what's going on? It's a one-on, one-off call. I think sometimes today they double voicing and stuff. Right, right. But that was Chris flying off there wow. on the mic. He again, young state people and saying, I will take it. <laughs> if things had gone wrong, I know what would have happened, but hey. I, I, I run off. I run off from a homie because, <laughs> listen, like I say, Chris, Chris, next level. Yeah, Chris, re- listen, mm. Chris was so good with the editing. After Chris told me, I used to, I couldn't mix, like I said, with the turntable, but I used to do my mixes on tape. And if you carry a, a tape with a mix, like you do a couple of mix on a tape, and Randy Bishop playing, you know, in them days, you get through. Yes, yeah. I'm ready to play to one and play it. this program, yeah, and say my clone because you used to call me that the clone, right? They used to call me a little Frankenstein because they say I am a bit of everybody, right? Everybody, you know, because at that time now I'm on here and I do a little voice stuff on there, and of course, I don't have my voice yet, you know. So when you're going on. You're, you're, you're trying to song like this one and you try yes 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 one so you're all over the place you know yeah. you probably tell yourself you're on but you know <laughs> yeah so they used to call me all kind of little frankenstein and right. and, and bishop used to say the clone the he used clone. to call me the clone he's the right. clone go this do this so 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 for him to be playing you know something that i do i mean he used to do run things from chris because chris is chris but for Correct. me to come and hand him and, and say hey look I say, <laughs> run this, yeah, and he put it on and say, yeah, and it's running, you know, and that was from Chris when he showed me how, how to, to cut and splice. Wow. Yeah, cutting out a word here and a beat, and I can, yeah, Chris, Chris Boynes, yeah. mm-hmm. salute, CD and Sasha Shalana. Yes, yeah. I had my team, yeah, I had my yeah. team again. Fast forward to some years later, Jenny Francois again. She came, she said, Harold, that time, 105. Oh, let me just give you this classic story. Before there we, we go, it's about stories. Now, yeah. we, we ain't reached the coup yet, eh? We're coming to the yeah, coup. Yeah, yeah, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It coming. All right, go ahead. Just checking out. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, Glenn Antoine, um, they moved Jim Sutherland to 95. That, five, that time, 95 started to open up. So, yeah. You had um, Josan Leonard. Yes. Used to do an afternoon program at the same time with Bishop on 9 5. And um, after a couple of years, she left. She was doing community dateline and stuff like that. Yes, yes. Yeah. So Jojo left and they moved Jim from 7 30 morning to that spot. And Glenn Antoine took over that time. Before that, Glenn was doing the Magnificent Seven. Yes. Normal announcer shift. And he used to do the Magnificent Seven, seven hours of music. Yes. That time, Holly Thomas wasn't even there. Holly Thomas didn't Wait, so come Glenn in. was on before Holly with the Magnificent yeah, Glenn, Seven? Glenn, yeah, Glenn was doing wow. the Magnificent Seven before Holly. He started off the Magnificent Seven. Right. That was, right, Glenn, right. That was Glenn's show. Yes. Right? Yes. On a Sunday. The Magnificent Sunday? Was it yeah, Sunday? Sunday, Sunday. Sunday, yeah. Sunday. 
the magnificent seven year holly and the kalaloo stick and then yes the swizzle stick <laughs> the swizzle stick yeah um so yes they put glenn into the morning show and was running the morning show and stuff like that of course i was just bouncing around a technical operator control operator b operator a little on shift somebody in show up Harold's demand and stuff like right, the falling. Right. Glenn got into some hot water with the company involving our boy G Man, Gerard Thomas. With Gerard Thomas, yeah. rest in peace, Gerard. Rest in peace, yeah, Gerard. boy. G Man, much we love going there. Yeah, we miss you. Yeah, yeah. He got into some hot water with an incident with G Man, and, and uh, rest in peace, Glenn. Rest in peace, Glenn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a, yeah, not a good soul. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he got into some hot water with them and they suspended him for a period. Yeah, he got suspended. You could say for what um, or we leave it alone? Um <laughs> Leave it alone. You wanna tell him that boy? It, but I don't know you wanna I don't know it's you wanna boy, it, it real bad or no? It bad, it bad. It bad. It bad, it bad. Yeah, it bad. So I, I want to go down that road, boy, but it was bad. It was um um, of course, I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to do the. Nah, we'll leave it. Nah, nah. We go. We, yeah, boy, name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We go talk I, about I, it off here. We go talk about yeah, it off yeah. here. Right. But it was bad. It, it was, was bad. real bad. Right. And I, um, you may not remember, but Gene Thomas. Oh, was. I remember what it was. Right. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, right. That's bad. It's bad. But we don't know. We can't talk that. Very. <laughs> according to Edison, Carr, very, very bad. Very bad. <laughs> very bad. <laughs> Yeah, um, body, body. Yeah, yeah, forget. Yeah, I clean forget that. that. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, folks, yeah. I wish I could tell you, but mm -mm. we can't talk about it. I talk about that. I talk about that. Ooh, that. Yeah. Oh, boy. So he got put on ice. For a period. Right. Um, Gene Thomas was the chief librarian at the time. Yes. 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 And um, she didn't take it well. Yeah. And, and, and the company frowned on 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 that movement. Yes. You know? Yes, they didn't yes, like sir. that that kind of vibe. Yeah, well, yeah, they they iced him, and um, I became the morning man on, on Radio Trinidad. Yeah, I was the morning man. I chef letter A. Hey, you yeah, so I holding down my chef, my the morning man, right? No, I kind of gone ahead because at that time too, Stanley and they didn't even reach into the game yet. Right, so right, right, right. Or Stanley and they came in. Because mm -hmm. eventually that same morning shift was handed over to Steve Sutherland. Okay. And let me tell you the story that led to that. Homeboy doing the morning show. Angela from people on the outside. Angela Fox from the Punch newspaper. Pick up Angie. 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 <laughs> Angie. Used to be in and out. Good friends with Jenny Francois. And so on. So she, um, she came to me and she said, Hey, I want to do a feature on you. You know, young thing. So... We did uh, um, a feature in the papers, and she had some pictures with me dressed up in a different way and say the different something, uh, the morning man, Harry, the wake up style, and like all that kind nice. of nice little prop up and stuff like that. Yeah. Fast forward a couple of months, she comes to me and she say, hey, boy, Harold, I have a little to give you, because 105 was now, you know, no you get ready to launch yeah. and stuff like that. And she said, um, have a little less to get you. Don't tell nobody I tell you. Um, Dave Elcock coming to do your morning show. Right? So I say, what? Um, she said, how oh, you feel about that? I say, well, you know, Dave in general. You know what I mean? So if Dave come in to do the show, there's nothing I could do about it. Right. But, uh, and this, 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 when you talk to reporters, <laughs> so you have to be careful. Yeah, we, okay. yeah, yeah. Say, yeah, because... You know they'll be looking for that song bite. <laughs> but, um, but but really and truly, if this style um not suited for here. Right. You know, I talking thinking 730 because that time the mind was not 105 is where they wanted them to go and launch off 105 yeah. station, local, only yes. local. Yes. Um so I was like, um nah, he, he can't rock this style. This is a whole different thing. He is a man with the voices, you know, Mr. Bitters and, yeah. and, and that kind of <laughs> them game reads and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and here we more business like straight, yeah, you know, yeah. you know, BBC type kind yeah. of thing. The announcers crisp, 
And um, so, so I, I, that can't work, man. He, he can't do my style. Boy, that was the headlines in the punch on the Sunday at front page, you know. Cool. It's Harold Thompson said, El Coca Rocky style. Try and find that news clip. I'm going to look for that. Look for that. Yeah. Some kind of thing for that. Boy, well, of course, you know, Dave El Coq fire back. Dave El Coq say, and I just remember this part Harold in Pampers. <laughs> oh, baby. You understand? Like, I will put him over my lap and slap him for <laughs> You finish me. Yo, yo, this is epic. Yeah, yeah, he does, he does, he does me off. Uh, Dave, big brother Dave. Big brother Dave, Dave, rest. You know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You go no, on. No, 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 Dave is still around. All right, <laughs> we're going to make sure. <laughs> big up to Dave, big up to Dave. Big brother Dave L. Cook. So, of course, after that, <laughs> after, after that article hit, after that article hit, the 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 weekend Monday morning, bright and early marcel called me upstairs oh marcel, god nah, be a boy now nah, general eh? yeah marcel say harold harold what is going on with you i say what he say and he, he had the papers on them eh? <laughs> he, he show me the arm he, show, he hold up he, he hold up the thing a, a picture of me and a picture of david cock is like a title fight <laughs> You put us in a in, in a real awkward position here. I said, well, you know, it the, I tried to explain, but I didn't tell Angela that. Yes. Once when I was referring to this and that. He said, no, man. He said, um, we ought to move here, you know? Oh, God. Yeah, he said, um, he said, because, and I could tell you now, Dave Elcock is coming. But you're not coming to 730. Coming to He's going to be... The person to launch off 105. Oh God! To pull another top person from the 610 network thing, which ended up to be Phil Simmons. Phil Simmons, wow! Right? Wow! Wow! So he say, um, <laughs> you know, he's my boy, but you, you had to do some jail time. <laughs> so, listen, Jace, I was knighted. You know what knighted was? After midnight. Six no six. Now nah, we didn't have that. Six a.m. to twelve midnight on seven thirty. Yeah, I get nighted. So I was working. That that was my shift now. So and six after the six o'clock news, the Indian program followed by Pat Matura, Moe Mohammed. You know, all the way up till ten o'clock. Then I had a little. Small time either with um Collins and, and, and Winston Mina doing the um thing. Then in the office you say, say Harold boy, all you need is a turban. <laughs> and you're right there. Because that was it. I became the death announcement champion. I heard you talking about it. Yes, I did that I, I did that listen, announcement once. Listen, they used to ask for Harold specifically to do the death announcement. So I used to record it at this time then ask to announce the following deaths. Ricky so and so from he was the cousin of relatives of so and so. That that listen, that was my punishment, boy. A DJ in the dead and all over me. Yeah, I was rocking the dead. I rocked the dead. For a, and <laughs> so I rocked the rock. <laughs> yeah, I was rocking the yeah, yeah, yeah. I I was the champion. Uh, you can put that as a first too. Hey, that's a first. Here we go. That's a first. How much? Hey, you you used to rock dead 24-7? Nah, I did it once. Dominic right. Canvas had made me do it once just right. to, to learn, you know what I mean? That was it. Champion dead bubbler. <laughs> <laughs> they won. Yeah. Oh, oh boy, you're knighted. Wow. So this is around what, what year? What year was this? Oh. Um... It would be somewhere in the the nineties, somewhere there, so boy. Nineties, yeah. somebody wrong there, so. So now what I can say. That's the only time I I came in. I was on the other side of. Well, right, we we coming up to that. Yeah, we coming up to that. So okay, we okay. Well, then then so, that had to be that had to be in the eighties then, like late eighties. The late eighties, yeah. Yeah. Because right right after that is when Jenny again came to my rescue. <laughs> Jenny Francois came with um the psych. 
which is the show that you took over. Before Sag, before Sag, you're jumping the gun. Before Sag, he did two firsts. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm going to tell you which first they are. Because after them two firsts, then you did Sag. Right. First, I don't know which one came first, which one came second. You will correct me. One was regarding dance hall. Right. One was with hip hop. No, but right, that was Sag. That's what made Sag. That was what Sag was? Yes, that was Sag. That was the whole thing with Sag. Jenny Francois gave me sight. She just said, you have a music program from, do what you want. from 10 to midnight. Yeah, you do what I want. Do 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 your thing. So again, I run to um Jared Newton in Devo Martin. Yes. My yes. Man mix. Yes. And then yes. I went to Juice Crew International. Juice Crew International. Juice Crew. International. Juice crew. International. <laughs> Juice crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what my drink spilling? <laughs> ah, sorry. Skates and the boys and them. Yeah. Right. And Juice Crew and they, along with Laundry on the outside, had the dub plate and the dub thing on lock. Curtis used to be flying out to Jamaica religiously. You understand? At the first year, besides, well, so the program started off with that. Street dub. Now, before that, everybody used to be playing the mainstream dance hall music. Right. And you know, the steel pulse, if you want to call them. Stuff, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so on. That's what used to be playing. Even Bishop and them. Bishop playing, you know, a the little crisis and them. Yeah, 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 that kind of thing. Roller skates and I, them thing. I come in with early Shabba, Nicodemus and them fellas and then that nobody and nobody. And you, Roy and them, you Roy and fellas like that. Right. You know, Rocky and them fellas was playing out on the road, the the, the outside DJs. I was yes, playing yes. outside with people. Right. Knew the music. Right. But he wasn't right. hearing that on radio. That's why I started to play. So I started to blow up with that. And then like about a month into the program, the rap session came in with In Effect. In Effect, Dexter oh Cornell, boy. Yes. Dexter, Dexter Cornell. In. Dexter came in and sponsored a segment of the program. And he was all about rap. Oh, your boy, honestly, didn't know the game. I mean, the rap that he was bringing, it was, you know, it wasn't the Curtis Blow. It was, blow, it was hardcore. It, yeah, it was hardcore. He was playing the, the yeah. Ice he Cubes, the right, NWAs, the, the, the Paris, right. the, the yeah, Lynch Mob. Guru, 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 Guru the that Amateur, gangster, and, and, all them things. Right, and, yeah, you know, all them fellas and them who was bubbling hard outside. Um, that time, Buster Rhyme was young. Yes, leaders in the new school. A squad, and thing. Yeah, it was a squad and thing. That's yeah. effects and them fellas. Yes, that's like, effects, okay. right? <laughs> right. So that flavor came into the show, right? So again, I had Joe School was the one. They used to come into the studio and stuff like that. And then they used to be peer mixes and things. Right. Jared used to do his own two on tape. That's so come, Jared right. Newton, yeah. right? So again, the DJs from outside, come getting their shine. Yeah, they shine on the inside and stuff like that. Wow. It was the rap music. Right. The bubble. So men was hearing things outside of the Sugar Hill Gang and, and good. Yeah, yeah. And cool Modi and things. They were good. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah but they, so the, the, that time span, you would have been doing that like around 1989, 1990. Right. Going into right. there. You, so, you have it. Like I tell you, when you reach a certain time, it's just forget time. <laughs> <laughs> huh? you, you, so that is 8990. So we started right. the other side of midnight in 1990. Right? Right. Okay, good. And then eventually yeah. that's when I got my break. And a right. year after was in 1991. Right. 1991, 1998. Like 1991. Yeah, because by that time, yeah. Mm -hmm. You so, passed the baton to me. Right. And I took so, over your show. Yeah, and then you went next nice level. From there, oh, yeah, yeah, out of the ballpark. <laughs> you know, level, as they say, chili baby, level it. You know, mash it up, fine, fine, fine. Wow. So, yeah, from that, with the kick they were getting, that is, that they, were, they, they were getting from that, um, open up the door for the after midnight session. Yes. Right? Yes. They op That opened up the door for the after midnight session. Yes. And... Yes. Of course, you guys came in. We went down the islands before that. That launch took place and stuff. No, while that was going on, while that had kicked off, we had a a, a power meeting down the islands. Um, 
Louis Lee saying right um Giuseppe mm-hmm. Neil Giuseppe. Clark, mm-hmm. Eric St. Bernard was on at that time too on 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 105 he was yes. the assistant program director to, to dave elcock yes and on chris boynes um i can't remember some other people like myself and they were going to rebrand nine five to be like the urban song that took to, to go with that yes um thing that was kicking up yes from the the overnight djs what i had started at the overnight djs was you know they were going to rebrand 105 um was going to be a caribbean station at first it was just local music okay the, the total local wasn't getting the the the, the push from the money the money the revenue, was yeah. the revenue yeah which has always been the thing people talk about yeah. how yeah. we don't like to play local music and stuff but that's not true you don't get the backing when you when you have something yeah, you don't at get corporate back backing then. corporate backing back then, then yeah. yeah back then no yeah, things are different. A lot of front, yeah, big, yeah. But back then, you used to get a little opposition, and then you still used to have people saying, "Why are you playing that kind of music outside Carnival and things like that?" So, right, right. So you right. still used to get that little, you know, yeah, look yeah. and sound. People telling you that. Yeah. But um, yeah. When we came back from that um, that, that power, and yeah, stuff, yeah. and they were getting ready to do their launch and stuff like that. Right around that time, I started to work in the newsroom as a reporter. So. I, your boy was all over the place. I used to go to work in the morning and all 12 o'clock and then in the night, I know going home because I just going from one shift to something else to something else to something else to something else. Ah! Here's a first in the technical operating days. Right. For that. I am, and I'm sure I can't remember if anybody did something like this. The first operator to work from Carnival Friday night to Carnival Monday morning, not leaving the studio. Yeah. Yeah. That, Technical that, that, operator. That punishment, just, boy. Yeah, let me just go back. No, but here it is. Let me just go, you know, rewind to <laughs> operating days. Yes. I think the night shift, Carnival Friday. I can't remember what event they had, but they had some big thing outside, and I was on the night shift. That event went till about half four in the morning. Oh, so back in those days, we signed off at 12. Yes. Back at five. Five in the, in the morning. morning. Mm-hmm. Used to play uh, a morning in national anthem and stuff yes. like that. Yes. Prayer, then a religious program. Then the announcer would come on, give a time check and stuff. And then you go into another half an hour program. And at six, everything. Stop. Yes, yeah. So I set up everything working from working in night shift. For my relief to come because things happen. So you have to leave before your re- you know thing. Before your relief gets there. Yeah. Yeah, and that that's another thing back in those days too. You couldn't leave your shift unless you're working last shift. Yes. You yes. Leave you cannot unless, abandon your shift. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, your, your, your relief had to be there. Yes. My relief and show up for the morning show. So homeboy work. Saturday morning till 12. My shift is supposed to start now at 12 because I remember the system night, midday, morning. So now the midday shift is my own. So you had to be work, right Saturday. So I work my Saturday shift, finish six o'clock in the evening, no relief. Carnival Saturday, like Panorama home a long time. You know how Panorama used to go. It's supposed to start at six or eight o'clock in the first bar and be yet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Edison can't pat the shop up in the stadium, up in, up in the savannah, just talking around. And listen, so right through until the morning, Sunday morning, I shift. I'm a morning shift now, according to the roster. All the Sunday morning, right. the midday man finally showed up Sunday midday after 12. Right. I went home, had a bath. Come out on Oxford Street. I never forget that. Come out on Oxford Street. I think I was living to the top of Oxford Street, looking over a Moko Rennie Gates getting ready on one side and Casa Street Orchestra on, on, on the other side. Then getting ready, all them masqueraders coming in from Juve. Yes. And when I started to tremble, my whole body started to shake. Serious. Just shake. Like, you know, 
I went inside and went to my bed. Tuesday, my mother waking me up, you know. Tuesday, my mother waking me up. I was supposed to work the Tuesday night, of course, because yes. you're off the next day. Yeah. Ooh, I Tuesday, sometime Tuesday, I get up, I'll show up and I show up, I know what day it is, what time. Right? I went through that. So that's another first. That's another first. Yeah, bro. Right. So we right. are all inside. We are all inside. That was more or less uh, 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 yeah. a journey of, of your development from the start. You know what I mean? Into becoming, making you blossom and become, become the all-round broadcaster that you became today. Now we're going to go back. And now is the time we go. we're going back. Not too far back. We go back 31 years ago from yeah. today. 31 years <laughs> ago. 1990. <laughs> yes, July 27th, 1990. 31 years ago, Trinidad and Tobago had one of its first, well, not really first, but one of the more notable moments in history where the Jamaat al Muslimin took over um, both Parliament and uh, I'm going to say communications, right? Right. Now, the history books have etched always etched red house and ttt and i don't know yeah. for some reason they always leave out tbc the Trinidad broadcasting corporation that house the radio stations and um that's always left out in the history books so right. you i mean I'm, we've, we've seen the stories we've seen it on tv we've seen different specials and so on i believe in 2010 2010 Emmett Hennessy, Emmett Hennessy finally got to say his piece on a right. special they did on TV6 regarding uh -huh. the, the, the could be cool. And of course, um, in the midst of that, they had where many people were held hostage. You were one of them. Now, prior to recording this, and some years ago, you and I sat down and mm -hmm. you, gave, you painted the picture for me exactly how that ordeal went down from start to finish. Yeah. So, um, the floor is yours. <laughs> Folks, people, yeah. people always hear the TV side. I want people to understand the radio side. So, yeah. paint that picture, Harold. We 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 are we are all 1990. 1990, July twenty seventh. <laughs> Abu Bakr jump up on the scene. <laughs> Six Look at me. Break yeah. it down. What went down and how on that day. things unfolded for the six days afterwards. Here's the crazy part about that day again long day at the station yeah started off the morning working in central control shift ended at 12 before i left to go home got a call from phil simmons he was doing the afternoon show i don't think he was calling it projection three anymore rennie had long gone steve Fallon with guests and it's you know on some days and stuff like that and um phil called and he said harold i can't make it in this afternoon, work the afternoon shift on 7.30 for me. You know, hey, opportunity. Oh boy, jump. And I'm going in. So, rocking on, on 7.30, music, around half four, got a phone call. Hello? Harold, Francesca here. Now, Francesca, Francesca and Hawking, I, huh? yes, Francesca Hawkins and I used to do a rock program on Five light that rock to go. Uh, no, sadly named it light rock when he took over. Okay, okay, okay. I can't remember. Maybe it was light rock too at that time. Okay, okay. Yeah, but um, so one Friday would be Francesca. One Friday would be me. I would work the rock show straight into psych. Going yeah till 12 right. and, and of course we have signed off at 12 back now, then 1990 i was not on radio yet yeah i right. was i was nowhere near radio yet so get a call from francesca harold i can't make it this afternoon hold on for me i go work the next friday for you okay cool so this is it now finish the show at minister six steve sutherland comes in and relieve me on 7 30. Went outside, and it was myself, Edison Carr, and Pius Mason sitting down outside to the back of TBC. Michael London was in the studio. That time we had an icebox studio that we had used in an expo 
in the front of the, in the building that, yes right yes. that was nine that was nine five studio we had yes. moved from upstairs and the, the, the so as you walked into the back entrance it's right that was the front. first thing you were seeing yes. here that yes. glass there and yes. the, it was a fridge and i was a fridge yeah yeah that they they turned into a studio michael was in there setting up everything and 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 we were outside there all talking and we saw these guys coming down tracksuit you know running and looking like an exercise club so i think pius made some some joke about it and they went into the tattoo car park that time it was a big car park yes river building was the only thing there and they started to do some physical work there so we dismissed them as you know as exercise team. people yeah yeah so it's now approaching six so edison gets up go to read the six o'clock news on radio trinidad well it would have linked up with everybody um i went into the studio um that time we weren't making a link so we, um nine five wasn't carrying the news so we started off at six welcome to the rock thing i you know spitting wherever lyrics was coming out <laughs> and during the introduction i hear in a whole set of noise and of course it was something like somebody banging something shots firing outside on me but of course we don't know michael and myself michael london we don't know what it is going on because we're at the car park but my mind not there it's you know i'm the little zone here michael spinning the music i sit down on a side chair yeah the operator so i say no one decide the thing and um we hear this little noise and then all of a sudden the door open up and a rifle point straight in my face and a voice just say come out just like what the hell it was just like everything just went silent come out come out so we're coming out of the studio and michael went out first and i'm coming behind him and the man said turn off everything turn off everything so, you know we turn off i took off the pattern took off the turntable we walk outside when you walk outside now i'm seeing Darwin, who was a security guard, lying down on the ground. Um, and they made us lie down on the ground. When I lay down on the ground, I see Pius Mason. I see Pius Mason in blood. Yeah, Pius Mason just lying down there in blood, you know, blood all over. I was like, in my mind, I was like, what the hell going on? And by that time now, it have like, I, you know, maybe 10, 15 people around you and you, you know you're just seeing guns you're afraid to look up but you know you're watching like because i see fires right there bleeding out first time i seeing a man bleeding out in front of me wow and then guns you know in your face all that kind of thing and back in those days i was lifting weights and and, and doing martial arts and stuff like that right and um that's how i met star child star child and i used to do martial arts up in barataria he was serious up, yeah <laughs> he star child he was he was djing right but, um he wasn't star child yet he was doing his mixes and stuff that like explains that. the ninja suit he wore for the thing yeah and he was a black belt right 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 really good too all right star child was, yeah we digress was, but let me yeah. get back to the thing <laughs> but, yeah yes yeah. so they say strong man come and they grabbed me up. I, I never forget I had on a white knitted vet, um, jersey. Yeah. And they said, come, come. And they pushed me into the central control room. You know how to take off this? So I say, yeah. They say, take off everything. Stop everything. So I started um, pulling the plugs. Yeah. You see like that. And so I'm looking around now for Pat Goodridge because he was supposed to be in central control. But of course, I ain't seeing Pat. So I worry now. Like, if he mm -hmm. gets shoot or kill him yeah. or something like that, yeah. Only yeah. to find out after Pat was hiding behind him, I'm <laughs> running the back and dumped down in the corner. I don't know how they found him, but yeah. they, they brought him out. So yeah. then, for that now they grabbed me again. Uh, where the other studios? Oh, I went into um to, to the Radio Trinidad studio now. As you would remember, there's a big door you push first. Yes, yes. To go in, Every and door, then yeah. in a little hallway. Yes. And then there's a second, second door, door to push. For the announcers and one for the right. Correct. So Steve is inside there doing his thing. And when I push the door now, Steve look up at me to say, like, what do you want? And he just come over me. With the guns. <laughs> yeah, gun, yeah, the minute. You just see gun coming down. 
Harold <laughs> cannot laugh. I'm sorry, I can laugh no, but at that time you want to pee, pee and shit at the same time. It's like your mind just all over the place. Wait. So they pull Steve Sadler off and they say, "Who else here? Who else here?" Sukram Ali was on 105 at the Ultimate time. Ultimate selector, Sukram Ali. Selector, Sukram yeah. Ali. So going now towards the, and me again. Oh, listen, all of that, all gun strain on me, you know. Wait. Strain on me. They do so and they pull out Sukram Ali out of the studio. Then the next guy come and he say, "You strong man, you had to put your partner in the car there and we had to carry him hospital." Like, what do you, yeah. So, what the hell is this boy? So, I come down the steps now. I had to lift up higher base. And somebody, I think one of them held his Help foot. Help you. To turn him, lift him up. And Cheryl Yearwood, which is my oldest girlfriend. Right. I mean, to pick him up. Right? So, so blood on Cheryl, your hand and thing? Yeah? Blood on your I can't even remember. I, listen, this, I, probably, but I can't even remember. Right. I just remember picking up Pius. And they say, put him in the car. And they tell Cheryl, carry that man to the hospital and bust it. You understand? Do, do, um, do ask some questions, just drop yeah, him there. Right out. Yeah. And when Cheryl left, you know Cheryl come back. Cheryl come back when the men and them was ponging one set of bullets and firing shots all over the place. Cheryl drive back. And if you look on the footage uh, um, that they show during the coup, mm-hmm. you'll see right outside of TTT, almost in the middle of the road. Right? Just kind of parked side. That is Cheryl car. Cheryl, come and pull up this one. Come on. White Sunny? Yes. That is Cheryl car. That is Cheryl Yearwood car. Cheryl, come out to the car. When they see Cheryl, they say, Cheryl, we, we, I'm mean, not Cheryl, but we are going, woman, we tell you, go home. She said, no, my man inside of there, I staying with him. Cheryl, Cheryl gangster them and come back in, in, in the um thing. But before all of that happened, after putting Pius Mason in the car, and this is where I thought, okay, boy, Harry, you're going. Once you take it and ride out. They turned to me, the guy, whoever it is he was, and he said, Tell me the cut you. What around what time this is now? This is this is this, okay. So they they started like right after six. So this would have been everything was happening, it was rolling fast. So this would have been maybe 20, half past six now. Okay. We, you know, they're right. Yeah, they're pulling up everybody. Or maybe, right. you know, 15 to 20 minutes right. until they're taking over the building. Right. The guy said, big man, um, we know it have a, a, a phone system to the front. I want you to go and switch it off. Switch off that system. And he tell this young man to go, a young boy, to carry him, me, to the front to switch off the board. Jace, by that time in life, I had seen enough Dirty Harry movie to know what a Magnum 45 looked like. Look like, right. It was the first time in my life seeing a Magnum 45 with the barrel just come out big so Dirty yeah. Harry used to have it in the movies. Yes. The, listen, the gun was brand new. How I know? You could smell the plastic and the stuff from the gun, black, handle and everything, shining. And the young boy, who looking like about 12 years old, no lie, after the coup and everything, we found out he was 14 years old, right? He looked more like 12. And straight in my face, right? Oh, gun in your face. In my face, so I watching through the pool, I see in it, and I never forget, I'm saying to myself, if he pull this trigger, Harold, you have no head. The, your head going off your body, go be quick. So I turn around now, and this little mother juice stick the gun. <laughs> <laughs> this shocking young boy stick the gun in the back of my head. Now he, he's short, so the gun right up the neck here. So yeah, yeah, right there. And he said, move. I walking now, when I say I walking through, and you know, in by TBC back in those days, it's amazing. It's amazing, yeah, 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 yeah. Right? To get to the front of the building, and I say, oh, what if this boy only trip or something by Harry? Yeah, yeah. it's a hairline trigger, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gone. Get to the front of the building now. All I do is pull out the plug. So I'm facing him now. He said, lie down in the corner there. So I lie down in the corner. Do, do I hear a commotion upstairs, shots firing and all that kind of thing. Jesus Christ. Coming down. 
when the fellas come downstairs, Edison Carr and Arthur Green, he was the news editor. He ran upstairs along with Emmett. They went upstairs hiding and they found them and brought them down. Now, just before that happened, Emmett made his big escape and got shot. The guy, you know, one of the so guys. He, Emmett was trying one. to hop the fence. No, he was trying to jump off of the building into a yard over on the other side. He was running oh. on, on the roof of the building. They had a, a, a level that used to have functions and stuff, you know, and, yeah. you know, back in the days. Yeah. So he was running on that level and then you jump in somebody's yard. And actually the guy who shot him, he, by that time we were, but I'll get it. I mean, just go ahead. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I'm lying on the ground, Edison is next to me and Arthur Green. And I'm hearing this young man saying, let me kill them now now. Let me kill them now now. He telling the, the, the young one that. Let me kill them now now. So the, the fella said, no. The boss man said, don't harm the hostage. He said, oh God, nobody here know. We could kill them here now. Serious. Jace, this is no liars. End up saying my prayers right there. And I was like, you know what? You're going to go today. This is it for you. You're riding out today. So, you know what I mean? Just just, just wait for it. You might feel it or, you know, you're going. Just as this one is trying to convince this guy to shoot us, I hear next voice come and say, hey, we're going on here. When we got up, there was this tall, about knack fella. The man, like, two minutes after midnight. All right? Come on, uh, yeah. Uh, what looked like a bulletproof vest, but it was not bulletproof vest. It was a vest with grenades on it, like you've seen in movies. Yeah, that man had the them all round, round bumpy thing. grenade. Yeah, yeah. A whole set of that on him, and of course, armed to the teeth. And he was the general. We say, um, bring them out here, and we went into an old production room. We had. Which ended up being the nine five that you came and met. That, that studio, room, that's your, yeah, that's where you right. all get locked up in. Yeah, that's the room they came first and they put us everybody in. So Kramali, we all thing. And by that time they had found Pat Goodwood because remember I he remember, was hiding. Uh, yeah, remember asking Pat which Pat you was, you know, thing, you know. So <laughs> we there now totally confused. Now mind you, at that time we had no idea what was going on. We hadn't a clue that this was Muslim or whatever. Right, 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 we right, just right. thought it was some disgruntled people, maybe with the station, some kind of craziness going on because they had no conversation with us other than move here, do this. And it was mostly targeted at me. So by that time, since you had powered on everything, you mm. all didn't know about the 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 um the, the red house, the red what house. was going on by TV. Then the broadcast that Abu Bakr yeah. was on the TV, Not, on TV with Joe. No, 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 yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we, we had no idea anything like that was happening. Right. We were totally in the dark. And um, and Cheryl didn't come back at to even tell us what was happening on the outside. Right. Right? So during that time, we just sitting there and we, you know, like talking to each other. What is going on, boy? Jamal Shabazz came through the door of course at that time but he introduced himself but we didn't know later we found out that he was the one of the coaches for the national team at that time national football team and he since become the women's national football team yes. coach and has gone on to do other great things with our footballers and stuff like that but he came in the room and he was the one who said hey folks here what is going on i am so and so jamal shabazz Tal Muslimin, and we've taken over the country. Unfortunately, um, we need the radio station to get the message out. And you guys work here. We don't have nothing against all you. And we don't mean to hurt you all. Um, you need to do what you're told to make sure that everything runs smoothly. Me again with my far self. Oh God, how I are jump that? up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was that type of person. I don't, I don't, I was always like that. So I jump up and I say, You is a Muslim? He say, Yeah. And listen, Steve and, and, and they could tell you about it. I say, You is a Muslim? He say, Yes. I say, I know, let me live in Allah, right? All your whole Allah sacred, right? He say, Yes. 
I say, well, I want you to swear on Allah, that what is you just tell us that no harm will come to us. Um, it's true. You, you, um, thing. So you look at me and he say, I am telling you now, um, we will do as best as we can to protect you all. You don't know what will happen outside if the army storm the building or the police storm the building, but we will try to protect all you. We just need all you to do what we tell all you to do. And then he left. He left. The next guy with all the dad, the kids and stuff really like that, yeah. he came in and he say, who is the the, 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 the studio? No, the Edison car. They said um, they, they knew Edison. So Edison come. Um, we need two men to go in the library and um, get some music for us. So Supram Ali and myself, we got up and they sent us in the library to get Black Stalin, um, Caribbean, thing was that, or this guy stay up Zimbabwe and, and some Valentino. songs around that. Yeah, right. yeah, Valentino and stuff like that. And we took it in to, um, to, to Edison, I think. Supram right. was behind right. the turntable playing the music and Edison was coming in and saying, um, you know, that what was happening and updating listeners on what was going on and stuff like that. I was just standing there. During that broadcast... This is the same uh, Friday night, right? Yeah, same Friday night. This time it's, it's probably 7, 8 o'clock now, so right. later on in the evening. Mm -hmm. All that time now, the place still. We don't know, because the end here, no shots and everything, nothing, the place still. By that time, Cheryl had come back and stuff like that, and she was telling them that they over by TTT too, and she here, they take over the Red House and so on and so on. So then, Kala Akibua came in. I was one of Abu Bakr's um, top soldiers. Kala came in and he made an announcement it, repeating what was going on and stuff like that. Left. Um, that went on all of Saturday and then, sa no, sorry, all of Friday. Saturday, I don't know what it has happened. By that time, they had moved us over to the front of the building where the new room and Dave Elcock and they had their yes. office yes. and everything to that side there. So we were all inside of there. It had calmed down and stuff, so they were allowing us to go to the, to the toilet. They just had somebody going with you. And when he was walking so that you don't get <laughs> least shot, you have to say, coming through, coming through, coming through. You're just saying that coming through so that they would know somebody Not to shoot you. They had people here post up all over. Saturday, either the army or the police decide, hey, we're going and light up radio to that building. And boy, shots firing all over. This like what time? It's like what time so? Uh, it's in the afternoon time, so it will be something like around two. Two in the afternoon, Saturday afternoon. Yeah, yeah, Saturday, sun hot outside, and you can't be both side because you know we have some um, big wires that you can yes. just stand up there and yes. see yes. outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't go, yeah, you have to stay down to the back. So Saturday, the July 28th, 2 p.m. Yeah. The army, yeah, the army start to open all fire on the building. You're just hearing shots and seeing chips, of, you know, thing going all over. And the Muslims and they, they started to panic. There was this guy, he, um, you'll have to check this. He was given a presidential pardon for, he, had, he, he was involved in the 1970 uprising. And during that um, uprising, allegedly, he killed someone. I believe okay. it was a police officer or something like that. And he, he got a, 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 um, a, a presidential pardon. pardon. Mm -hmm. So he was over, he was a member of the group and he came into the building. We didn't see him all the time. He came into the building and of course he was senior to everybody else who was there except Jamal. And he said, well, what is going on? Wrong up all these people here. We're going over to TTT. This building is secure anymore. So the guy asked him, need man, how are we doing it? And he said, we putting them in a circle. We in the inside of the circle and we going over, walking over from TBC to thing. So y'all are gonna be a human shield. You are gonna use the hostage as the shield. Yes. Oh, God. Harold again. No Harold, we do. Yeah. I fly out and I say, nah, me and doing that. I don't know which part I, I say, nah, me doing that. 
Jamal say, I'm um, thinking if we go outside the army, don't know we, they don't know who we are, they're going to be firing at us, you know. Um, this is Jace. That man look at me. You know, is the death look? Death look, yeah. Yeah, and he had he had a um uh it was not 45. A Glock. He had eh? a Glock. Nah, it was not a Glock either. It was one of those type of old time um pistol in his hand. It was a shorter barrel from what the police used to have back in them days with the long, long barrel. It was the 38? A, the 38? Uh, yeah, the, yeah, probably a 38. Yeah. In his hand. And you know, if Jamal Shabazz didn't walk around that corner at that time, I feel about that guy. Because yeah, he looked like, you know, you use the trouble man here <laughs> in your Christmas. Yeah, he it was it was it looked like that. Honestly, it looked like that. And the same time Shabazz walked around the corner. And, hey, look this man. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> what? Why to carry you outside, thing, thing, thing. Jamal looked at him and he called him aside and both of them had a conversation. And you could tell that he wasn't pleased with what Jamal was saying. But then Jamal turned to us and he, he, let, he went. I don't know, he probably went back over to TTT because they had some way they were getting over to TTT freely. And he said, um, he said, yeah, what is going on? This building... It's not safe anymore, and we going and leave the building. Is anywhere we could put you all, that all the field all will be safe. So I think it was Mark Holder who said, "Yeah, Studio Two. Well, Studio Three, which is the 105 Studio. Right. If you remember the 105 Studio, the studio Ooh. itself. When you walk up the step from the library, it was the studio on your left. On your left, yeah, yeah. Um." <clears throat> And down on the side, there was a big recording room. It was a huge room. A huge room, uh, yeah. I remember that room. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It had a piano in it and stuff. Yes. When Auntie K used to come to do her yes. stuff and things like that. And anybody who had, anytime they had any big band, Studio 2 had one like that too. Yeah. That one, because Studio 2 was closer to the road. Yes. yes. We, we went into, into Studio 3, down inside of there. And he, he said, listen, the army, they're going to come into the building. And most likely they're going to use tear gas. Burn like hell. But try and take it. Do not run about. Do not get up because they will kill all you. My Stay God. there. Now, this is about, it's like about six o'clock in the evening now. Saturday evening. Right? So, just everybody lie down and we, nobody even talking. We just Wait, like a food or they eat nothing. No, well, no, we're here. We were eating like biscuits and little stuff that they had. Um, we had a, some one of those people had a, a, a sponsorship, like prizes for something to give, right, yeah. And it had like Dixie biscuits and right. little chubby and things like that, right? So that's what we were eating at the time. Even the, the, the Jamaat member <laughs> was going down on that. <laughs> at, that at, at that stage, you and Thinking food. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just, you know, it's just about happening. survival. You're in survival mode right now. Yeah. Go right. so again. Saturday evening. Them boys and them sat a Lego letter them. And the men running, you're hearing them running all over the place and all that kind of thing and all kind of noise and all kind of commotion going on. And we don't lie down there. And when I just like how they tell us to lie down, <laughs> lie down like that, and nobody is moving. If a mosquito bite you, ain't scratching it, you not <laughs> win. Right. And just believe it or not, every single one of us fell asleep. Fell asleep. Yeah, because you're, you're, you've been up for over 24 hours. Yeah, right? Yeah. We don't know how it happened. And then you're silent too and you're just listening. So somewhere along the line, sleep took over and we all fell asleep. When we got up, it was early Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Like maybe after four or five, somewhere there, so really early. And we started to bowl, hello, hello, because nobody want to come out to the studio. Hello, anybody here? Want to come out to the studio. So then we eased open the door. Hello, hello. Nobody, nobody. Myself, Mark Holder, we called into central control because the doors, when you come up the door, they had one door. And a second door closer to the entrance. Yeah, or exit. 
So we went through that door. Nobody in the building. So we do so, we come back and we tell Edison. So everybody start coming out, no one pushing the little studio, but you're crawling, eh? You're yeah, yeah. Quiet. And you're looking. So everybody coming back, nobody I see, nobody like they're going. Going into in central control, we have a private line. Pick up the line and call 610 radio. Because at that time we knew that they had put us off the air. They had taken radio Trinidad off the air because we were effectively the voice of the Jamaat. Yes, yeah. Because 610 and 100 was on, and they were, of course, giving true updates to the public here. What we was just doing? telling them what repeating they were yeah. saying what they want to say there yeah so they went up to cumberland hill and the, the station so we called um edison was on the phone called 610 radio Tony lee answered the phone and he informed us from them that there were 10 of us here at um tbc radio in Trinidad. we were held hostage and now the building is empty the Jamaat has left. Please tell the army and the police that it have hostages in the building. So if they come into the building, they're looking for us rather than think there's nobody else in the building. So we're listening to them now because we have the receiver kind of listening to them. About 10 minutes after, boy Jews really come on and he big up 100, really talk about you know this is you know we're here and we wait you and we're giving you all the information that you need to know on this situation in the country and stuff like that so we said all right i mean he can't announce it on air that um yeah 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 well no we're talking so you know he tell the um the the, the police or something like that i was passing nothing we by the line waiting to see if a call will come back because we give them the number and everything no response nothing we realized like oh, i'm on and take we on or no we had to do it on our oh. own so mark holder and myself we started looking all over the building to see what or how we could get out of this thing but in that same studio too i end up seeing a, a little vent between when you go down into the studio after you push the first door on here in before you got to the second studio the actual studio door there was this space and there was this vent so i kneeled down and i looked through the vent and i called mark i said mark look at this thing here so mark this one he thing it and we prize it open we pull it we see a long thing going and then a light on the other side okay. i'm going for it to know how else, right so mark crawled through when mark crawled through he said hey is this tour room so we said well, all right so we start to call everybody and we start to push everybody through through this little vent yeah, through through. yeah the vent and we everybody called through i know steve sutherland went through the vent but yeah steve you know Bro, steve was was a oh, no, no, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, fm oh, fm drive the car <laughs> steve steve is a six footer yeah and he and big steve, right and steve wasn't fat steve was Solid. Solid. It was brolic. Yeah. It was brolic. You know? Yeah. Um, I don't know how Steve went through, but Steve... Hey, fear is a hell of a thing, eh? Yeah. Steve, 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 make it through. So right. we were all now into the storeroom, which was the Rediffusion room. All the old televisions, when they had Rediffusion and they were there in that room. And okay. Right. So we made our way through the room and we opened the door now. So we in the car parked to the back of the building. This is so this Sunday, right? This is Sunday. Right, this is Sunday, yeah. Okay. Sunday now. Mm -hmm. Sunday morning. So we're looking out now, and there's another way, uh, warehouse in the in the car park. And between that is a, a, a space like maybe about the size of me, right? A wall here. This is the building here, and this is the space running through, right? And houses on the other side. Master plan was, I think it was Mark Holder, we're going down there jump over the wall and make we escape. So everybody, all 10 of us, going down. So this is, let me see. So Cheryl Yawood. Right. Mark Holder. Mm -hmm. Steve Sutherland. Right. Um, Arthur Green. Right. Edison Carr. Sukram Ali. Right. Michael right. London. Right. 
Dawe, the South Karate got Dawe in Yearwood. Right. Um, who am I missing? I have a list here, you know. Um, Pat Goodrich. Pat, right. Pat Goodrich I, and myself. Right. Like the top ten. Like the top ten. Yeah, the top ten. <laughs> <laughs> going down this little trace. Right. When we reach down the trace now, Cheryl the Trooper is the first one to go over the wall. Now, Cheryl, I, don't know, I think it's a white short pants on top thing. So, yes, Cheryl the prop. And Cheryl halfway over the wall and we only hear, Freeze! Where are they going? Oh, my God. Why? Cheryl, freeze. So, cram and somebody else looking to run back. You only hear, don't ever move. Don't move. I'll go kill all you. Don't move. Freeze. And then we hear the voice say, come over. Meaning Cheryl. Yes. Come over. Cheryl, come over the wall. Take off your clothes. Turn around. Back on your clothes. Lie down. Next man. And don't try to move because I see it now. We don't even know where the voice is coming up and nobody is looking. <laughs> so is a sniper? Have on yeah, you. Yeah. We just hear, don't what? move. Nobody don't try to move because I will kill you all here. He's, no, let me, let me yeah. get at me real thing. He said, don't, no, like don't fucking move. Yeah, oh. yeah, the man said, yeah, 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 he said that. Right. Oh, right. I will kill all you. Right. Next man over the wall. Hold oh, went over. Same thing. Take off your clothes. Turn around. Right. Lie down. I went over after and it went like that. Sukram Ali was the last man to go over. Went. <laughs> I'm sorry, Su. I'm sorry, Ultimate. <laughs> Sukram was over the wall. Coming over the wall. And we just hear, started hear shots being fired. Now, we don't what? know where. Yeah. Shots started firing. We don't know where the shots coming from. But we're already lying down on the ground. Right. Sukram on the wall. Panic. I don't know how it ended up, but Sukram tie got stuck on the wall. Oh, and the tie was god. actually hanging Sukram. Oh my god. Yeah. And Sukram was so scared that he was fighting up with it. And of course making it worse. So they sold themselves. Hey, 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 you only have only pattern for killing that. <laughs> Oh, I think it was Michael, myself, and Steve ran towards him. And of course, Michael and I held his prop him. So you hear yeah. right. And Steve, because it all just reach up and, and, and do the tie. But the arm. So can I take all that tie since Friday? No, no, no. No, but they're telling, listen, like you was asking me if I had blood on me. I can't even remember. Right. He probably even remember you had another. Yeah. Your mind not there. Yeah. Your mind not there. So, so this was when, this was Sukram. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> tie in the business. So right, we finished that now. So they say come into the house. This into the house, and they say all they working together, all the children, all the Jamaat members or whatever it is. We say no, we have IDs. In those days, we had badges. Yeah, like that. So they say pass it. So men start taking off the badge wherever they have it. And to them, you're lying down, man. They're telling you, don't look at them. Right. But you see, the camo stuff. So then a man come up and he say, Jason Thompson, um, Franco Harrell. And he started doing names like that. They started making yeah. names to see if somebody could jump out themselves and say, yeah. yeah. And everybody keep quiet. And then they started to say, Harold Thompson, Cheryl, your word, so and so. So then when everybody clear and they realize, okay, they think, of course, Cheryl didn't have a pass, but, you know, they realize, okay, then they apologize and they say, well, listen, sorry about that. You know the situation. We don't know who is who. The people who take over the, or trying to take over the country, looking just like all you. They dress just like all you. Because they really have on track pants and they yeah. didn't have on, you know, sort of Muslim gear and stuff like that at the time. The ones that, you know, held the building and stuff. And they say, all right, we're going to get all out of here, but we need to know how will you come out. Mark and I show them, sure. them, yeah, a thing of how to get into the building on scene and get um, to the to the front of the building. Using that um, advice, that's how 
they end up blowing a big hole in the wall at TGT sometime later. Yes, they have yes, blast yes. a big hole right because yeah. from there yeah. when they when they think you know, when they were getting ready to storm the building. Right. Was, I think they, they so just, when that um, happens Sunday, right? That is the Sunday. Right. What date? So, so this Friday twenty like, seventh, Saturday twenty eighth, Sunday twenty ninth. Right. Monday so is by, by by Monday we were up in Camp Ogden. Okay. Okay. So they took us out this Sunday, the same Sunday evening. By that time, it's evening time now after 6, 7. And we went up to Ogden. That's when we started to see all the ministers who made it out of the, um, who went at the Red House. Yes, Camp Ogden was the, like, the rest right, of the yeah, 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 yeah. So um, they took us into a tent and started to do the debriefing, asking us certain things and, you know, how this and so, and who and how much men and things. Like that. And, um... After that, um, they asked, like, where you're living, different people, where they're living, and how they'll get to their home and stuff. So, um, like for myself, Michael, we were living in the Devo Martin area. So, at some time during the Sunday, we got into a Jeep with the soldiers, and they dropped you at your home, at your, home. your destination and stuff like that. Right. And that was it for us. That's how our... Um, our session with them ended. And then emancipation days when we right. saw they surrendered. They must have been surrendered. Right, yeah. Later down yeah. in the week. Yeah. Yeah. We had the, the deals made and, and, and the things like that. And then to top it off after all of that, and of course before the courts, by that time, um Jones Madeira. Jones P. Madeira, um, yeah. Um, um Debbie Ransom, mm -hmm. um, Dominic Kali Yeah. Uh, Andy Johnson, right? Sandra Maharaj. We had a whole power team in the newsroom. They, a whole power team became because remember Jones and and and, and um, Dominic were TDT. Yes, yes. By the time yes. all of those the dust settled, they had come over to us now. Andy Johnson. Yes, he, it's true. Right? They had a whole power team. That's true. Over, that's how they came over. Yeah. Wow. And somebody in that power team decided the best therapy. Because by that time we were seeing a psychiatrist and uh, counselor. Because I was not about to ask if you had to do therapy. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you had to do therapy. Um, yeah, yeah, because um, it had some people who, um, you know, still up to today, real messed up from it. Like Emmett, I was in a chat with Emmett um, a couple of Saturdays ago, and we were talking about it and how he got shot trying to jump off the building and stuff. He started to cry and tremble. Wow. Wow. I had to kill the talk and say, "All right, all right, calm, calm down." Yeah, wow. um, still messed up from it, and I know uh, some some others too. I know Sukram, Sukram, one who took it real hard. Michael was already a quiet person, and then he just like saying Pius Mason was always jovial. Yeah, but Pius, <laughs> you, would you believe? Would you believe? Pius is still walking around today with pieces of the bullets in him. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I saw him recently and he was yeah. saying because at the time what they you said is based in Carnage? Yes, yeah, Carnage. yeah. Um, at the time they, it was too close to like the organs and stuff. Or something like that would have been touch and go anything, yeah. if they had gone to interfere with it. So the hope is as the years went by, if it's moving, they'll monitor it and if it don't move, if it's not moving like to their heart or something. That they could um, either deal with it or whatever it is. And the last time I saw him, which, you know, you say last and in your mind, when you get my age, it could be about two years ago, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> two or three years ago. Is that like, just the other day. <laughs> You're talking about 1996 or something. Yeah. Yeah. He, um, he still had, he said he still had fragments. Fragments. In him. And Ooh, so on. So, yeah. Uh, so, somebody. Yeah, mom. <clears throat> Yo, yo, always angry. Yeah, always. Boy. yo, that man, that's a story, dog. Somebody in the team, in the power team, decided the best therapy for Harold because, um, it changed me. Eh? Um, after that, after after that, um, oh, do you after the, after that experience, I I was more aggressive. Yeah, um. I was like quick to anger. Right, right. Yeah, right. you know, like 
you just say something off don't like in the gym yeah. rodney rodney and they used to joke about that same thing they used to say don't let him turn green and that boy just trip the just, hulk man the hulk yeah. bug they used to say yeah that's what i'm telling you you know in the line where hulk say that's my thing i'm always angry yeah that was the line you know it's like they used to say like we're training and sometimes you know even like somebody would be like we're using a piece of equipment and but would come to say like you will have long again here and i would trip and rodney rodney via my coach used to have to say calm down Harold. calm down Wait. calm down and tell the person like back Move, home, yeah, back yeah. Home. yeah yeah that fellow does yeah. lose it quick and you would remember too at 105 jason from um who was in green Eden now jason skeet. skeet jason skeet yeah yeah we had an experience where um we were joining for the news it's the queue and instead of joining on he continued playing music yes i remember that and then you fly at him yeah, 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 yeah. I went to the trip. studio. At that was in Ebony. That was in Ebony 104. Yeah, yeah, yeah Ebony, yeah. right? Yeah, Calm yeah. down. Yeah, so yeah. that changed me. And um, so what was the right else, idea that they, they, they told you to do? I don't know. I think it was Jones, Jones Madero, whatever it is. Uh, I decided that it would be a good outlet for me to, um, as therapy, to be around. So I was going to court and seeing them fellas and them every day. And it turned out that after a while, they started to turn to, to me. Take a message to their family because they had them in the cell down in Chicago. Wait, 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 wait. The po- the news the news team, right? Thought it was a the great idea team. for you to go and talk to the prisoners. To, well, no, to cover the story. So I was the a reporter assigned to do the mad case. After so, that ordeal you went through. Yeah. So after yeah, because I guess too, I wasn't showing any. Any awkward signs like like Sukram and and, and right, like, but still like you're still older. fucked up here. That, huh? Yeah, yeah. I was like, a matter of fact, the 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 therapist said, um, she had a name for it, and she said that I was one of those people who, um, they fear the most in the sense that I could be walking around the savannah and a car backfire, right? And the sound. Right. I would trip off from that in the sense that i could either go mad or freak out and that would be your trigger as to the other people who were showing the signs and right 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 the breakdown and all that kind of yeah, thing like that yeah, 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 i was yeah. just like everything was internalized i was just like you know effort kind of thing and moving on yeah. so yeah they decided i would do the case and i um shaman babulal um <clears throat> Sharon Babuwal, um, remember, um, her sister used to work, um, Sheila Rampasad. Okay. And, and, um, Mariam, I think is weak. She's now a judge. Weak, so, um, forgive me. I can't remember. That's all right. Right thing. now. Yeah. Um, we all used to go down to Shagaramas to cover the case. And I was driving because... I had the TBC vehicle, so I used to pick up everybody and we used to go down. We had a full team and cover the stories and stuff. And after a while, because the guys they, they remember you they were seeing, yeah, they used to be like, and they call in you like you call his friends. Eh? Hey, Harold, um, when you go outside, tell my wife that so and so and I didn't get the socks and I didn't get this. And yeah, you carry messages when you go outside and everybody, so you know, it was like that. Well, needless to say, that therapy or whatever it was supposed to be working alongside or covering the case of the Jamaat al Muslimin didn't do anything for me as far as calming down that anger. So much so that after I left the TBC network and went over to 9 7, um, I went and I joined the army. Yes, I joined the volunteer service and I spent three years there working with the boys in green and um that helped that helped but to date i would still you know get that feeling that that you know powerless feeling you know and uh, sometime i would lash out um depending on who you know it is coming at me yeah they will feel it that uh, what an experience yo <laughs> and then <clears throat> this is where you end up coming into the game yes at that time all of that had gone through and stuff and 
Jones Madeira, um, they wanted me to make a switch from the DJing, the site, and that kind of thing, to be a serious news person. Wow. To do me into a, um, a Tony Fraser. Yes, yes. You know, kind of real hardcore newsman stuff. But yeah. you know what I mean? I was game for, but I really love the DJ. I really love, uh, you know. So that is how I got the show from you. Yeah, because what happened? Jones wow, sent this me is, this, to, this, this, this blowing my check mind. It. The cool. They check it. Yeah, Jones sent me to Jamaica. To, uh, um, uh, the United Nations had a, a special crash course for for people already in media working. But myself from Trinidad and a girl from TTT and, and two other people from government ministries. And then there were presenters from Grenada, Matt Dominic, um, Dominica, Bermuda, and Jamaicans too in, in that. And we were doing um, radio, news, educational broadcasting and stuff like that our skills in that and stuff like that right and that went on for some months and when i came back when i came back of course by that time you i was on the air yeah, yeah on the other side of midnight up. and then yeah. they were grooming me to do do solo the solo gigs that's when dominic right, was grooming yeah. me to be a, a, a solo so they um neil the and they neil the seppi and they um right neil the seppi and they called me upstairs and they said well you know harold a serious person you know, you can't be, um, you don't look good. You're, you're, you're talking street talk. Right, and right. Mic and, and you're bubbling, playing gangster rap music. <laughs> gangster rap music and, and hardcore dub. Oh, dear. Then, oh, next first. Next first. I was the first radio announcer to have dub plates play. Early Buju Banton. Early Buju, 19 years old. Yes, and, and Juice Crew International. Everybody had the plate. Laundry and them fellas had the plate on the outside. But the remember, you all radio. Went, yeah, you all weren't on yet. No, we weren't. The no. midnight. Yeah. So I was the first man. The player who had the plate. First man singing Aral Thompson. Get up this year. Where you gonna do to stop him? Do you have these things yeah, still? Do you have yes, them? Sir, I had the disc, and when nine nine um nine seven moved from Long Circular Mall. To Herbert Street. Uh, Barrow, Herbert Street, where we are now. Yeah. Somebody, all, all my dub plates went up, boy. Oh, I had, my God. Must, they can give us man like Aral Thompson. That's how they can give us. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> Aral Thompson, man, run things, yeah, and so on, so on. So yeah, 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 so on. But you had dub plates. Remember Chris telling you, I went to... Um, the Grandmaster Flash concert. Yes, yes. I can yes, tell him, yes. hey, Grandmaster Flash was doing <laughs> <laughs> with the music, and then Chris went and and doing it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that was my thing. I, you know, I mean, you, you and I sitting down in the room, and you play music, and it would just come to me and I'd say, Jays, try this. <laughs> And then you will just do it. You know what I mean, you are the skills. You will just make it happen. I say next life I was supposed to be a producer or something like that. Right? Hear these mad beats and stuff like that. Yeah. So they right, had this right. talk with me and they say, "Homie, that style ain't cutting it again, you know. You have to make the change now. You have to be a serious newsman. Yes, yeah. Pull yourself down. By that time, again, schooled by Barbara soon. Yes. By the great, by the great, the great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tony Fraser. Yeah. So in, in a little bit and thing, Dominic. Everybody. Yeah. If I do a story, they're looking it over and they they tell yes, it. Yes. Yes. So know how to do the reports and all that kind of thing. I was feeling it, and just at that time, Archie Henry called me. He was the program director at Nine Seven, and you know that my boy. Because Archie and, and Gabriel Francis, the men woke me up. Bring you from you day see? one, yep, yep. Harold, I want you on this team. That time they had Glenn was there. Glenn was at, at, at nine, nine seven. At, at, at nine um nine seven. It was, yes. Yeah. It was um Robert Booze in the morning. Mm -hmm. Uh Annie Telfer. Uh -huh. Um Wade Watley. Wade Watley, yes. 
Natasha Jones right, right. in the afternoon. Glenn yes, came yes. somewhere after that. But he, no, actually, I was there before Glenn. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I was there before Glenn. Right. But right. Um, and, and then Celia Scott. Celia Scott. They had yeah. somebody else and then Celia Scott doing the, the, the 7 from 7 to 10 um, thing when they brought me on. And again, when I got to 9 to 9 5, it was in the capacity of you're going to be working in production, working in the newsroom, working in programming, because that time we had the computer and your music coming up. That's like when you got to 9 7, you mean? Right, to 9 7, sorry. Right, right, yeah, right, right. 9 7. Yeah. Um, so you'll be working there. With computers so, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, newsroom, yes. production, yes. programming, right. to program the music and stuff, because you used to make a playlist for the days and yes. stuff like that. Yes. And you used to do my on air shift was one hour between 12 and one, 12 to 2. 12 to 2. Oh, we had Watley come in with a drive time. Okay. 6 to 7, which I used to record before Celia started her program at 7. So that was my three hours in between there. And then Robert Booz left and they put Wade in the morning. I didn't work. Then they got um, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Stanford, I think his name was. He used to be on 100. Real good voice. Right. But um, he got ill and passed on. Okay. Um, yeah. And then they, um, I think that's when Glenn came in. Okay. And okay. Glenn, Glenn held it down for a little while, but he got the call to go to, to 96 9. because by that time, right, not, yeah, 90, 96, right? 98. 98, yeah. He, right, yeah, right. See, then 96 so got, and then went to 96, yeah. yeah right, yeah. so yeah, he got the call. Yeah. And of course, that was more his vibe because yes. 97 yeah. back then was really deadbeat. It was so deadbeat. I got there, Chris and there, I remember saying, Harold, we get you're like about three months and you're busting it from there because we know you can't handle that because it was really just more music let's talk and it's elevator music here yeah, yeah. yeah Bing Crosby and so on so on yeah. that was it so much so that after my first couple of programs um peter ames who had owned the station say harold we love your style and everything and we love your presentation and stuff but you need to change up your style to suit this game. So we're going and send you to Edison Carr for him to break it down and rebuild you. And also they sent me to Barbara King, which is Garfield's King wife. Garfield King was the head of news. Yes. At, um, yes. She's a speech therapist. Okay. Okay. And um and Edison Carr to change up my style from the hype. And, yes, to know, bring it on. To bring it on. Say, yeah, they used to say I saw me like I saw me nine five ish. That's how they used to say. Wow. I do when you read a commercial because you know you have a thing in here and you know yes, you're going to yes. flow. I would go and find um, background music to play behind nobody else and doing right, that. And doing right, all the same right. things that so it wasn't just my voice alone too, but the your present whole style. Yeah, your present. Yeah, it was yeah. was a little too hip. Tone it down. So yeah, so Edison worked with me and Barbara King to get the um the grandpa the grandpa blue <laughs> boy. <laughs> yeah. I say, all right, come out to the Ferrari and jump in, <laughs> come jump up into your crank car. <laughs> You're going back to the to the fourteen fifties or whatever hey. it is. Like. And um yeah, so it just went on from there and um. A little while after they started 104. Yes. It started off the same way like class yes. at a classic version of 97. It started off with a classical music um style. Winston Maynard was there. Then it went to talk, Tony Fraser, Andy Johnson. Then they tried a little something. Phil Simmons came on board and stuff like that. And then they decided, hey, it had to be Ebony. Yes. Ebony yes. 104. Yes. And they um they started bringing in um, DJs yep, to, yep, to push it. Yep. Third base had a session on uh, on. Oh, early yes, third one base four. was there. Yeah, third yeah, 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 yeah. Third base, third base was there. Um, who else? were? I can't remember, but I know third base. Third, third base, base was there. well before before I got there. It was um, Richard Simply Smooth, right? RW, right? Yes, King, King International. Phil Simmons, um, 
And I think they had Kabuki. Kabuki, 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 Kabuki was also Kabuki was there. Yeah, Kabuki, Kabuki, yeah, Kabuki, Kabuki, yeah, Kabuki. That was the team. Was, that was the team before yeah. I got on. Right, Kabuki. Yeah. Kabuki was there too. When and I got on, now, and I, yeah. I you remember the Franco episode when I right. got on. I filled next in for, level. Next, <laughs> next. See what I mean? See what I'm talking about? <laughs> You are talking about? I filled it for Phil Simmons and Robin mm-hmm. Bansing, the program director, was like, Right. <clears throat> you ain't can't be on no weekend alone. I want you as my drive time guy. Right. And, and the rest was history. That, yeah, that week that, that drive time was like Epic. Oh. The, yeah. Then we brought in the yeah. Peter Kelly. Right. Oh gosh. It's Thursday. <laughs> day before Friday. <laughs> Salute to Peter Kelly. Kelly yeah, yeah. We got to yeah. Peter Kelly. Yeah. Then and then afterwards you got on. Franco came on. Adrian Don Mora came on. Jason mm-hmm. Smith came on. Um, who again? Who again? Um, the girl. Um, Janelle Bonte um, came on. JD. Yeah. Then JD came JD. afterwards. Then JD. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Now, some top ladies too. Can we share something before we even get to, you know, you. wrapping up? <laughs> yeah, you, you. All right, folks. I was, how I how these stu- get to this? <laughs> how these studios? Something. How these studios were set up? Yes, at, Mother uh, Nine Seven and, and uh, Ebony One Hundred Four <laughs> in Long Circular Mall. They were separated by just a, a piece of glass, a glass, a big glass, a thin glass too. Yeah, thin glass. Yeah, Ebony so here and Nine Seven on that side. So mm-hmm. I was facing you. Your back was no. Your back was facing me. But sure. You, yes. Yeah. Well, you remember your studio was facing production. Yes. And stuff was no, it eventually, production. it eventually right? came away. But then, yeah, you know, but how you used to sit down, <laughs> wicked boy. You would do your thing behind your mic with your back facing me. <laughs> but when it's time for me to come on, you used to be like that. Tell them. <laughs> Tell them. So what used to happen was we would sync for the six o'clock news. Four o'clock and six mm-hmm. o'clock news. Yeah, yeah. We, we used say. to have the. We used to have the, the, the. It was actually four, five, and six. Four, five, and six. Right. Think. Yeah. So, so we you have three times. <laughs> yeah. And you know me, I am a jackass. I'm a kicks man. So I like real shit. So Maurice Brash, <laughs> Maurice Brash would come to read the news mm-hmm. in nine seven, right? And. As Harold say, right. I'm looking through the glass, watching the whole scene play. And Morris is facing me. Morris back is you. to me. Morris right. back is to me, and he is facing Harold because Harold is operating them, right? And Morris, like he some day, like I know what happened to him. Like some days he, he just didn't use a proof pre roof pre read. Yeah, proof read. Yeah, that's what I used to say. Proof right? read. Yeah. reading news, and he would stumble <laughs> at certain times. You know what I mean? And. <laughs> And the oh, stumbles, so I used to laugh. Now, Harold is with him in the studio. Harold cannot laugh because it will throw off the whole newscast. So what I used to do was, every time <laughs> Maurice would stumble, I used to do an antic like I would give him a clout oh. through the glass. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. And Harold now trying not to laugh. Mm-hmm. Had to fight it. It wasn't just the clout alone. You had other antics. You said, yeah, stand up on top of your table and do all kind of monkey tricks and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, those were the days, boy. Those were the days. I let miss me them. I, one... I miss them. I miss them. Yes, let me add one little piece to that. With yeah. an it had us a, a Friday. We had, by that time, we were giving the playway and pick two results. You remember yes. that? Yes, I remember and, that. Right. And whenever I had to read the news, you used to try the same thing on me. And I used to be hiding under the newspaper. <laughs> oh, sorry, not to see you. And you used to be doing all kinds of things. I'd see it between me. And I would be trying and, and see you trying to get my attention. But one day, I was about to do the playway results. Uh-huh. Come out to your studio and come in by me. <laughs> the gong went off. Remember, you used to go, Kaboom. Yes. And I used to say, the playway results is brought to you by so and so. Playway number is number six. And you started to laugh and throw yourself <laughs> all over the studio. And I started to laugh on here. You, that one, I, you caught me. Yeah. I crack up. Yeah. I could not. Every time I say, I do the number. <laughs> I remember that. The number five. <laughs> yes, the number five. Yeah. 
Yeah, oh, that God. was. I couldn't hold it back. And then this is this is our our, our crown. Crown. How do you say? Crown and glory. Crown, yes, yes. Which one? Crown and glory. Crown and glory. Yes. Crown and glory. Yes. Right. yes. Earlier night. Remember that? Oh. oh. When we went up the casino. Yes. Afterwards. <laughs> yes. But first, we started in the studio. Yes. Nine seven. And I won't lie. Back in them days. The boss treated us real good. They bought Chinese yes. food for us from Seoul. It Sibos. was family thing, yeah. It's big spread. I was working all yes. night. You were working all night the same time. They brought the yeah. food. I brought. Drink, uh, so I brought we drinks. Had, we had yeah. We had we had um we had a bottle uh, 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 some wine or something that something. Did. And Come them, and them days you. was hypnotic. I brought hypnotic analysis. Right. <laughs> and yes. And not only that. Not hypnotic analysis. The Heineken. The Heineken. The big Heineken had champagne right. bottle. Yes. Yes. Right. Heineken had given you this big bottle. Yes. Yes. Right. yes. And we drank, drank all of everything. that. Everything. Everything while on air. So, to say that we were buzzing is an understatement. Yeah, boy. We were and a mess. So we had, I don't know how our shifts went. I don't know how we ended the shifts. We, yeah. When we were finished at 12. No, we, we finished at 2. Two right, two o'clock. Two o'clock. Right. So, so we, we said about, happy new year. We we brought right. in the new year and uh, yeah. yeah. And we were about to leave the building. That was 2000, 2004 into two thousand five. Yes. Right. We leave the building. They had a security upstairs in the in the casino. Yes. They had a big party going on and we got into the lift. He was going up. Yes. And he say, "Remember the big talk? Yeah. Well, guy, yes. Well, yeah. Where are they going? We're going home. So now." Nah. A little come upstairs and line with me, man. When the old years into the new years. <laughs> and folks, Jace and I went up in it was a it was a um a, a, a elderly elderly crowd. It yeah and Joey Lewis was the band playing yeah, and Joey Lewis and, and sing the moto. <laughs> sing the moto. We folks, drank and laughed at everything and everyone yeah. imaginable. Listen, we were actually rolling on the people ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Laughing and throwing myself on the ground and rolling about. The next day, remember, shame. We don't want she everybody was talking about us upstairs. Yeah. We shame to see the the yeah. the, 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 the bouncers and yeah. then we shame because boy, toilet like gone bad boy. God, listen, we laugh. Remember Pops with the gold chain yeah. and, and the chest open on that night and the and the pants quite. He ended up being somebody's relative that we knew. Shush, that is a bridge and mine father. Shush. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah. The parents up here. Yes. The body chest. Yes. The gold chain out. Yes. <laughs> and we were on the ground <laughs> laughing and rolling all over the ground. So even, listen, at that time, we didn't know what the people were saying about us. <laughs> after the day after, it was like, jeez. Really, young now man. we really, yeah, yeah. Listen, that that was a fun time, brother. Yeah, that was a fun time, as yeah, always. Nothing, fun times with you, my brother. Yeah, nothing could be that, but oh my god, listen, hey, Harold, you give you give us the, the best one of the best stories ever, best transitions from your humble beginnings, preparing you as an all round broadcaster. You know what I mean? Yeah. Very few. Can brag and say that they're an all-round broadcaster. All right, I have Man. just a, I, I I'm I'm more or less a, 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 just a notch below you because I didn't really dive into news. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say right. I wouldn't say below. It's just the direction you decide yes. to go yeah. in. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. And but, mind you, mind you, I um in the beginning it was one that I. I chose to go in. I, right. I wanted to be right. the mic man just dropping the tracks and all things. Right. But it had right. people, right. like I say, seeing something else and saying, hey, you should do this, you know? You should, you should try yes. this. You should, you, you should do that. Yeah. And thankfully, I listened to them. And up to now, I would still have people calling me, you know, like I would make a slip and Edison would call and say, and pull um, up your socks. Harold, yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, Harold, what um, was that? Yes, Yes, um, you just said so and so. No, no, no. You know, but I remember Barbara soon before, you know, Barbara, yeah. Yes. She used to call me her son. And she would call me and she'd say, you are not my son. You are not, I, I'm going to disown you. What is that you just said? You, right, you right. Son, Harold. Because, you know, that was mommy. Miss yes. Mommy too. Yes. You know, 
Yeah. She used to say no, and I'm Janice Ray G. Janice, yeah, Janice yeah, yeah. great. So you know, yeah. always watching out for me, always looking out, you know, and you know, like I say, up to now, I would still get a call and hey, you're yeah, do you can't do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Joy Dumas, yes, Joy Dumas met me in the supermarket. She said, I heard you the other day. <laughs> I could not believe you said that. She was, I dragged right, right. like, you know, it's sometime now. I was saying the other day, but it's a couple of years back. Right. She was, I can't believe you said that, Harold. You use that, my boy. Right, right, right. Man, oh. so, but yeah. But the bottom line is, you're an all-round broadcaster, and I mean, top, cream of the pack, top of the top. You know what well, I mean? Thank you. And I definitely have to humbly say thank you for guiding me because you did many stuff, and now that we've connected the dots, not even realizing. That because of the attempted 1990 coup, that's what that was part of the the catalyst of me yes. getting my break, full, my full break full, yeah, on yeah, 95.1. Giving where you your you runway. had to go into news and you passed the yeah. bottle to me to take over that show, and now I'm here today doing what I do. So, uh, Carl Thompson, I it, salute you, doing my it and doing it well. <laughs> I salute yes, you, man. my brother. I salute you too, man. Next level. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the one the only Harold Thompson. There's a few guys. Hey, that's another life, man. Real jacket. Yeah. In the build, but listen. Yeah. You could have that title too, eh? Besides neck level, most jacked present. <laughs> yes, listen. <laughs> up to you know, up to date, I would listen to men and hear them running the lines and saying, "Damn boy, they put that right out here." But sometimes you know, be like, you know, like. Women lyrics going, boy, <laughs> because new school kids and them jacking your lines, you know. Yeah, so but up, pass it over. Hey, you gotta it say means you're doing it. something good. It that's means, right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. That's right. You know what I mean? Harold Thompson, thanks so much. This has been an epic, epic show. One Thank you for the books. opportunity, man. All the best. All right, all the best to you, my brother. Same to champion, you, man. Champion, champion, salute, salute, salute. All right. Yeah, man. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the one, the only. We're talking about the mic drop sessions, the anniversary, 31st anniversary of the attempted 1990 coup. We say rest in peace to the 24 people that lost their lives and the hundreds of people who were injured during the uh, insurrection in uh, 1990. Our hearts, prayers, thoughts, and condolences go out to the families. And of course, we say salute to those folks who are still around that can, that can tell the story and of course, let us learn from what happened back then. In the meantime, support it, man. Just Chase 868 on my socials. Comment, subscribe, like, share. Even click that bell for notifications for upcoming episodes. I'm Just Chase, TNT's most dangerous DJ. We'll see you another time for another one. I'm out. Salute! Ladies and gentlemen. Just Chase. Just Chase. Just Chase. Just Chase. And they just got back from world tour, and I think they got something they want to say. Oh, 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 oh. Now, listen to the sound of the 